Do I have to ask for a motion? Yeah, so uh, someone has to make a motion to open the meeting. Okay, so our chair, Brian, is uh, not here at the moment. He should be here in 10 minutes. Until he arrives, uh, I will conduct the meeting. Um, to open the meeting, we need a, a motion to open the meeting. Can somebody make a motion and a second? I'm making a motion to open up uh, today's meeting. I second. Uh, okay, now we have to have a vote. Just you know, ask the question. All, right, all, all in favor? Aye. Ryan, Ryan, are you in favor? Ryan? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're going to start the meeting. Um, we, we have another people in the audience, but uh, until Brian gets here, we'll cover some old business items for the first 10 minutes, and then we'll get to the um, new business and people in, in the audience. So I, mean, I, I did take a drive, you know, today just to kind of look at some of the stuff in the field. Um, so you do want to start with jury drive? No, I'm going to start with jury drive. So old business one, jury drive. Um, it appears the location for the new sign has been staked. Uh, I did speak with Public Works. The work orders for uh, item one and also item 16 were put in in uh, mid-June. Uh, so hopefully that will take uh, occur pretty soon. Uh, there are certain requirements we have to go through in, call, uh, in terms of calling for utility markouts, getting that done right. And uh, you have 10 days within which to call the markout and then get the work done. So uh, I'll push Public Works on that. Um, I think number two, I think it's a kind of a larger discussion. Uh, number you you about North Barry and Brook? Yeah. Um, I, don't th I think that was waiting for an official recommendation. Right. I, I thought, Michael, the, you agreed, you suggested that we just make a motion to put a stop sign, and I think we were all supporting yeah, that. Happened. Um, I mean, I, I think that there was no official recommendation at the last traffic commission meeting. It was kind of yeah. in emails that we agreed yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah, I think there was a motion to put the stop sign in um, now and then look into the uh, flashing light. So um, do you want me to report on the flashing light thing or? Sure. Okay, so I, I did talk with the board last night about the uh, flashing pedestrian signals. Um, this uh, requires some more information. Uh, we have to uh, get updated quotes because the quotes that we have were a couple of months old. Um, and uh, we wanna make sure that uh, if we go ahead and purchase that, we purchase it right. There's some questions I have to address about um, the um, kind of the hardware uh, on these machines, uh, the uh, solar cell batteries that uh, operate the machine. So. I am following up with the board. I think I transmitted to the commission uh, a memo uh, identifying, I think it was seven intersections that we recommended. Uh, I think it was Maranek Spencer, Maranek Palmer, uh, North Barry Brook, uh, I think North Barry Jefferson, uh, Prospect Fenimore. Um, I think that's six. I can't remember where the seventh was. Uh, I'll stop by it, but those were the uh, initial locations we recommended. Um, you know, ultimately that that's not, you know, if the board, it would be a capital project for the uh, the board to fund. Uh, but I don't know if there are any comments generally about the locations I specified or the, the type of technology that uh, we're looking to install. And uh, just for the benefit of the audience, what, what the flashing uh, thing is, it's a uh, pedestrian button at crosswalk. So there'll be a sign, pedestrian presses the button, it lights up to let the drivers know that there's someone in the, in the crosswalk. I did, I did advise the rest of the board last night that the uh, commissioners were, <clears throat> um, uh, it wants something to happen sooner rather than later. And, and uh, so that, that, that time is of essence that we don't want to just sit and wait for this to happen. So that uh, so that's where the interest in the stop sign came from. I think I have that right, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And removal of shrubs as well. Yeah, so um, uh, they, they, they were curious about that, so. And I'll follow with building department. It's just, uh, we're down uh, one and a half assistant building inspectors. So they're a little short staffed right now, so. so. I'm not sure there was a motion made to install the stop sign. No, yes. it was, a, it was something that we were going to consider. 
So if, if you want to make it now. I propose a motion to put a stop sign at North Barry and North Region at a time where we explore the flashing pedestrians. I'm in favor of that. So I would second that. I second. Uh, Ryan, we're going to vote on that motion to install a stop sign at Brook. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. It's actually installed on North Barry, not Brook. Okay. Because there is one book. At, at our next meeting, we'll, we'll consider the flashing lights. Okay, so it was that, uh, okay. Um, uh, was that waiting for the flashlight or in, in addition to? Well, yeah, I think it, it, it's. It's a stop gap. Um, stop, I got it. Yeah. yeah and can we, can we redo that vote, be please? Because it should be, it should be uh, Barry, not Brook, right? Barry. Yeah, it's great. You can always stop at the North Barry Brook intersection. Right. Now, which corner are, are, we, are we putting the stops on? We're going in, in which direction? Well, I, I, both I, directions. If, if you just say it always stop at the intersection, I can write it up accordingly. So it'd be a two way stop? All way. Just say all way. Okay. Yeah, all way because it's you, there's already a stop on Brook as you approach North Barry. You're, you're recommending uh, stop signs on both approaches on North Barry. So. The, the, the technical term is creating all way stop intersection. Do I have to repeat that? <laughs> uh, yeah. You just say all way stop intersection. I propose a motion to put in all way stop intersection, North Barry and Brook. I second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Approve. Uh, okay, number three on old business, Stanley Avenue and Mount Pleasant. Um, I, I think uh, after we we met, I asked if there was any if you want to talk about the that crosswalk, which I had um, we had a traffic engineer in 2015 who drew up a, a con conceptual plan to create a crosswalk across uh, Mount Pleasant from the Stanley Avenue intersection. So as a follow up to that, I did meet with uh, Westchester County uh, last week. Um, we have a um, uh, what's known as a community development block grant, uh, which the this grant is going to uh, initiate uh, what we're terming the first phase of the Mamaroneck Avenue School uh, pedestrian improvements. That was part of the walking assessment that the Traffic Commission did, I want to say in 2018 or 2019, uh, and also for uh, infrastructure improvements along. Mount Pleasant Avenue. Uh, so I spoke with uh, someone from county planning who would do the design work for us. And uh, she would, she agreed that we could include the creation of that crosswalk as part of the county, uh, the, the CDBG grant, uh, which it will probably get done next summer so that we can uh, coordinate it uh, as all part of one contract with the school improvements because uh, if you're working around schools, it's best to do it uh, in those two months that you have in uh, June and July, or July and August. So, um, and I'll, uh, if there are any questions about that, I, I wanted to know if, uh, if you wanted to kind of discuss that in tandem with the, uh, the parking restriction with, or the parking elimination of parking spaces, which you already approved um, or you already recommended. Uh, but since I was able to have that separate conversation with Westchester County, about them including that as part of the design. I wanted to let you know that uh, uh, we can get that taken care of as part of a larger project uh, and be responsible for 50% of the cost of doing that work as opposed to 100%. Okay, our chair, Brian Williams is here and he will now resume uh, chair of this meeting. Uh, thanks everyone, sorry about that. Had a bit of a situation with uh, my dog being held up at the groomer, so <laughs> I couldn't bail on her, but. So appreciate uh, all of you waiting. Um, Robert, Dan, um, which items of the old business were you up to? Uh, I discussed, we discussed one, two, and three. Okay. So, and, and two and five are real. We kind of discussed that in tandem. So the, the commission made a recommendation to establish an always stop at the North Barry Brook intersection. Okay. So that addresses kind of two and five to a certain extent. Okay, got it. Uh, and I, I mentioned I'm going to follow up with building department. We're just down a couple of uh, assistant building inspectors right now. So yeah. they're a little short staffed um, as far as the code enforcement. Um, 
1511 Mamaroneck Avenue. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, for item number three. Oh, yes. We proposed, there was two motions, but the second motion to change to, to um, reflect to have a no standing sign. Yeah. At Mount Pleasant and Stanley Avenue. Yeah, I'll, and not remove the parking spots. And, and, and not remove. Oh, not remove. Parking. Okay. Then it's just, okay. Then I'll, I, but I did want to discuss the, when I, when I found that old uh, conceptual plan, I wanted to bring that to the commission's attention, which I did. And I had that follow-up conversation with the county. So uh, we can get that uh, taken care of uh, at the cost. I, I just want to clarify, are we going to continue with old business now that we have people here from new business? Do we want to address new business yeah, first? We can, we can come back to this. Yeah. We can get through some old business by the 10 or 15 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm old business, business so I'm not really close. <laughs> And I can stay as long as you need. Are we okay to stay another okay. Yeah. No, we appreciate it because we started an hour early to get through the old business uh -huh. because of uh, the last meeting being postponed. So, right. but we appreciate it. If something comes up, you know, dog at the groomer, and then just, you know, okay. raise your hand. There's three people on Zoom from the Marion Avenue School. I just want to make you aware. One raised their hand before, but she said, forget it. I didn't know. I don't know how your meeting works. Like, if like people can just chime in on whatever, or I, I just wanted to make you aware. I no, appreciate that. Typically when we start um, the new business, we really haven't had old people join for the old business and we open the floor, give everyone okay. a couple of minutes to speak. But I just wanted to make sure you saw. I no, appreciate that. So the next item from the old business is 1511 um, Maranek Avenue, the no parking. And this was down, um, I'm trying to think of the intersection. Uh, it, it's it's it's, it's right before um, uh, uh, was it Warren Avenue? I think it's the yeah the little stretch between Travers and Warren. But, uh, but you know the the county just finished uh, mostly repaving. finished the repaving yeah. work. Um, so um, I think they're pretty much done with the uh, the line marking uh, the lane markings. Uh, we do have signage up. Uh, for no parking. Uh, I think it's the next house further north of 1511 um, is where the where there's existing no parking signage. They wanted to remove a parking area adjacent to their driveway. Yeah. I remember we discussed this at length. Um, it was either in the previous meeting or the meeting before. Um, and there was issue too with the apartment building yeah. with respect to parking along Maranek Avenue as well. And um, I don't think we had a good, a good solution. I mean, yeah, what, I mean, what can we even do like, well, I mean, you know, if, 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 if there's a recommendation to remove a parking space, we'll, you know, bring that to the board. Um, I, it is a, it's a tight area. I mean, you have yeah. a, you have an apartment building that was built in the 1920s or 1930s when uh, the concept of a family, even owning one car, was still, uh, uh, you know, not not a certitude. Let alone what you see nowadays with families owning two and three cars. Um, you know, these these this this these places were built when it's just, you know, when you build that entire neighborhood was built in the 1910s, 1920s. Should one of us go out and see how it's impeding them? from getting in and out of their driveway because I, so. I mean if it's impeding their well, so backup I get everyone complains about visibility you know what their their driveway is a downhill slope so when they come up we don't have a good view of the oncoming traffic until they get to the sidewalk or too late into the street and that's their issue and that's something that as a traffic commissioner I think I feel that's what we should be considering I understand that parking is at a premium, but at what cost are we not going to recognize the safety versus allowing cars to park corner to corner, bumper to bumper? And, and we're going to have a situation where your quality of life is impeded. You're not able to pull in out of your driveway. Certain things we need to consider and have certain guidelines as to how close you can park to somebody's apron or driveway coming in or out. I mean, it's something to consider. Just for the commission's reference, in New York State, it is illegal to park in front of a driveway, and, and uh, the police department can and has cited people for that. Um, 
I, you're, I think you're talking about a larger issue, which is the, the, the buffer around a driveway. Um, because yeah. that is the fact you can't get in and out of a driveway if a vehicle is parked right on each line. You're, you're, you're bringing yourself out into the street or you're not able to back out. It, it, it's difficult. I mean, I could take this back to myself on the street that I live on. If there was a parking space at the edge of my driveway, on both sides or behind where I would back out, I would not be able to get in or out of my spot. It's something that the village and the, and the traffic commission need to control before it gets out of control because this, it, just, it just starts an overflow and a ripple effect, my opinion, humbly. I have, I have no opinion, so. There's no parking lines there. Yeah. Right, which is well, another complete, like that's what I'm saying, even lines near, you have a street in, in that situation where you're having that situation, a possible, you know, even if you're parking, putting lines where there's no parking, where it could be enforced, if they're over that, this way, you know, it's behavior modification. Okay, let me not block this person's, you know, visual view or obstruct them. Um, you know, the, we, I think the questions come up in the past about, you know, painting parking spaces in residential neighborhoods, specifically, it has come up about Washington, though. Yeah. The if that's a recommendation, that's fine. Um, the what we looked at it, and uh, if we're going to install parking spaces or we're going to paint parking spaces, they're going to be regulation size parking spaces, um, which means that they're going to be you know 18 to 20 feet long, which is a typical size for an on street parking space, a parallel parking space. Um, that would likely reduce the available parking that, you know, when, when people are parking uh, without parking lines, they are parking closer to one another. Um, so, whereas if you had a hundred foot stretch of road, you may be able to get, you know, five parking spaces. Uh, if you didn't have the lines, you might get six, seven vehicles. So it's, it's a trade-off. Uh, just that, and that, that was the consideration that we've looked at in the past is that, yeah. Okay, we have a, a new item, uh, 412 North Barry, which is basically the same situation. Someone has it coming at home on North Barry. When they exit their driveway, the visibility is poor. They're not asking to remove a parking space. They're asking for a safety mirror. And I'm sure this is very common throughout the village, people who have homes and are coming out of driveways. Um, due to cars parked on the, on the street, visibility is, is a problem. So that's a common problem. So is installing a safety mirror um, a better solution than removing a parking space? I, I think the problem is that you're, you know, at that section of Mamaronic Avenue, you know, you, usually the, the mirror is on the opposite side of the road and the opposite side of the road there is what, 60, 70 feet away. I, it might be a little difficult to see unless there was an existing utility pole that, um, that was high enough for someone to take a look at it, but it's, it's it's not it's not a necessarily the best uh, location for a safety mirror. I, I can think. I agree. I, I I would I would be more inclined to start regulating parking. I mean, everything isn't going to be perfect, but the overall accountability and safety is what matters. Not how many cars you can get into a single spot. You know, you just, it's like a size 11 shoe you wear, but you, you know, trying to walk around in size 12, it's, it's not gonna work across the board. Uh, I was in a bad president by removing parking spaces because someone complains about visibility. That's such a common problem. Um, if, if, uh, if we permit that and allow others who have the same problem, we'll be removing many parking spaces that we probably um, are, are not good for the village. The tough thing, I think it sets a, it's a slippery slope, the precedent that we're setting is like, I mean, do, do we go to each house and set back the parking? Like, I agree with you, like ultimately our North Star should be safety of pedestrians, children, and the residents of the village. But how do we go about that? Like, I, don't, I, I think we're getting there, but I don't, I'm not quite sure if, I'm not quite sure we have a solution that makes sense. Like, because then, you know, if we paint parking spots 
we set them back, you know, eight feet. Is that sufficient enough? Or if we install one parking mirror, I think in the situations like um, Stanley Avenue and Mount Pleasant, since it's so frequently traversed, it makes sense there to reduce the parking through the visibility. Well, on a home by home basis is tough. But even if you don't remove parking and you set parking boundaries and spot and spots, you would be able to enforce that and the right amount of vehicles would be parked in that location without having to be bumper to bumper and shoving themselves in. So you could have six cars parked in a spot that really legitimately can only hold four. Yeah, it's so you're not removing spots, yeah. you're, you're giving it the right, the ample amount of spot that's supposed to be mathematically placed there instead of turning a blind eye and letting everybody squeeze in and just going with it. And if we did it consistently along Romaranek Avenue, then it would be a setback for each and then, house. And then you're setting the stage. This is, this is your, this is, you have, here are your lines and this is where you're allowed to park from. And this way you're not removing anything. You're, you're setting the stage and putting the exact amount of vehicles that can be in that location. No more, no less. Yeah. Or at least if you paint lines where the driveways are to give enough room where you're not supposed to park so close to the driveway. Right, the setbacks like on each side of the driveway. like Especially however. on the Meredith Avenue because it's a two-lane road. And I know exactly where you're talking about. And I I know who lives there. I parked there before, and it's hard even pulling out of the parking spot, not just pulling out of the driveway, just because it's two lanes and the cars are going so fast. If you take it a step further, I mean, gosh, in here, there's probably, there's been concern raised about the high speeds on the Maranek Avenue, as well it's as. It's worse now than eight. Right, exactly. I remember Dan, you know, <laughs> you joked that the, you know, the condition of the road was a speed deterrent, but yeah. now that it's paved. Like... <laughs> Shouldn't have paved it. <laughs> you have any thoughts, Mike? I agree with you, Brian. It's, it's hard to determine what. Is the criteria for the parking spots? I mean, to me, it's it's a sort of job to determine how dangerous it is. Yeah, that the resident is asking for us to change. So it is our job to go there, take a look, and determine. How we have a lot of we, we have a lot of oh, other items, items to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Are we spending too much time on this? Perhaps we yeah. Let's keep it. Make a quick decision or. Could it continue at our next meeting? About eight minutes, eight, nine minutes. Okay. I don't think we have enough consensus to move forward on something, but we should definitely keep it because I think we're, our thoughts are in the right place. I, I think, think we're part of the bigger picture. Yeah. That most of our complaints that are coming in sort of tie in to this situation across the board. Yeah. Um, visibility, speed. I, I can go over some of the other items real quick if you want, because I know. Um, yeah. So number uh, number five was the the commission took an action. Yeah. Um, number six, uh, I believe the town has harmonized their truck restriction with the village's <laughs> truck restriction. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, I, I can't imagine the police department is going to do a stakeout on Harmon Drive to. Uh, you know, see what's going on with, with trucks. Uh, yes. But we did get a recent email from the gentleman who lives at Harmon yeah. complaining about trucks. Yeah. So it's still a problem, according to him. I, 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 again, I think it's it's an enforcement issue that would, yeah, I th the, the police won't have to, you know, observe it. I mean, I, I, I I don't know if that's you know, something that's in their normal protocol to you know, have a, a vehicle stationed on a road like that uh, for trucks or other you know, various uh, uh, you know, vehicular traffic issues. Um, I, if there's a request for the you know, the chief to look at deploying resources, I mean, you can certainly, you know, that's a request you can certainly make. Are the trucks in his photos that he sent, are those over the um, 
the size limit? Um, I believe that the R the bill. The restrictions are now no trucks. So there is no- Oh, so it's no trucks yeah, altogether. The, the, the town had a four ton weight limit. Uh -huh. uh, but when I spoke with the town engineer about this, uh, Mr. Wasp, uh, his recommendation was just to match ours because a weight limit restriction is typical for uh, like a bridge that can't, that's not rated for something. Uh, a road is rate is, a road that's in the ground is is going to be rated for anything. Um, so that was his recommendation. And like I said, I believe the town has uh, effectuated that. So the, uh, the, the, it's just, I think it's general no trucks restriction. So he sent over like, there's probably at least 10 different trucks. Yeah. I mean, I think it is a, you know, I'd be in favor of making a motion if we can ask the chief to step up enforcement. It seems like a, yeah, I, I, an easy thing to do. Well, uh, it's easy to make the recommendation. Yes. I, I, I'm not going to you know, get into what the chief may or my, may not do with personnel. I mean, it's you know, I, 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 I'm not going to speak for the chief. And if the lieutenant wants to opine, he can. But it's well, we, can, we can enforce what's going into the town of Marion because our signs are on our side. But whatever is coming this yeah, way, yeah, we can only enforce on the on the village's side know, of the border. We can't, you know, we can't yeah, I mean, think, I think the was it the Girl Scout House is kind of the uh, the border. Uh, a little further, I think. A little bit further. But they, or it might be across from Revere. Is is a kind of across from Revere is where I think Revere. A little bit, yeah, a little bit further. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, part of Revere is in the town. So, I mean, I can yeah. certainly make that recommendation to the chief and say, look, you know, the village is just concerned about a little bit more truck enforcement going into the town of Marion County. It's not. And and you may also want to, uh, I think the the town also has a traffic safety. Commission, yeah, you may want to communicate your. I was going to ask if you could just talk to them too. Well, I mean, I, yeah. I, I can, I, I can, the, our chief can talk to their chief. Um, uh, but I, I don't know. I, I know that the, the town, the town's senior administration has been copied on the emails from uh, Mr. Ditello, I believe, or Ditello. Um, so, yeah. I can't force the town to do. Anything. I have a question. Does, doesn't this still allow trucks or moving vans or large vehicles that are doing work within that on that street? Yeah, I think you're right. Well, so how do you distinguish between someone just passing through and someone actually who's des who has a designation on that street? Well, I mean, and, and that's part of the issue. Usually no truck signs are going to be accompanied by another sign that says except for local deliveries. Um, now, as far as that, the the only the only local delivery would be either on Revere or Harmon, because I don't think there's any other cross streets out there. Um, but that that is part of the that's part of the issue. You have to determine what's uh, uh, what's local and what's not. I mean, I, I have to imagine um, that uh, a majority of the truck traffic is not local. Uh, but, so I, I imagine they're probably just using that to uh, get get off of Post Road. Mm -hmm. can, can we go on to the next one? Yeah, let's go to the next one. I'm sorry, I jumped back to item five. I don't know if it was a, there was a resolution. I don't see them. In the yeah, I, I don't. I don't recall what what our resolution was. Oh, North Barry. Oh, I'm sorry. I I, I confused that with North oh, Barry and Brook. Yeah. Okay. So, so Jefferson, that was the well, speeding and, the last act and dangerous yeah. because the park is there. Well, I, I honestly, Mike. You know, I, thank you, Michael. Yeah. You know, the other item is we, you know, we have a firehouse right there too. So I don't know if uh, I, I took a look. I'm not an engineer, but I verify that. And you know, it's, it's a gateway or a segue to get to the highway. And I was driving up, and you have two stop signs going along Jefferson. Then you have that, you know, do not cross state, allow pedestrians to cross. I was just thinking that if there's four stop signs, there's going to be a big slow up at that section. Yeah, and I mean, it's just going to be a slow, and, and then when there's four stop signs with traffic, you never know, the car is just kind of delaying, I'm not sure if it goes where. Well, I, 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 I'm not, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know about the other part of the, other members of the commission, but I'm just not in favor of that. Yeah. And, so, and that's still so traffic. Yeah, I think, um, uh, I said, I, I hate to put uh, uh, our esteemed ex-chief Larocco on the spot, but... Uh, you know, so we have a firehouse right there, and I, I imagine you don't want thing, things blocking the box. 
Uh, you're you're muted, Andy. You're muted. Okay. Okay. I can see. Not speaking for the fire chief, but I can definitely see impediment of the apparatus leaving either right or left of the fire station responding once our volunteer firemen arrive at the station and board the apparatus if you had a stop sign there is exactly to concur with dan it would block that box out that could cause a result in a delay of the apparatus getting out safely uh gary yeah i have a question regarding i don't know if i brought this up once before at that intersection and this is this is for the village police. I've actually noticed that there's a non-village police officer that sits out there and writes citations for people that are speeding through that uh, walkway where the fire department is. Are we aware of that? That's uh, MTA police. What they do is they they watch the overweight trucks going over the bridge. So they're okay. using an unmarked white vehicle, but that's they're they're responsible for. They have like a traffic unit and they're responsible for um, overweight on railroad bridges. Okay, so they're not, are they not pulling people over? Because the, the one that I witnessed was, was a bunch of pedestrians. I don't remember if it was a truck. It might have been a truck, but they were in the crosswalk there and they were pulling them, pulling a, a maybe, maybe it was a truck, pulling somebody over. Well, I mean, their main responsibility is probably with the trucks and, and they have a different mission than like your local police department. Okay. They, they may have the authority to pull over anybody they want. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think they're violation. They're... And I would welcome it if, if they're, you know, if they see something that we didn't see, you know, I would have no problems with that. If that's in their manual procedure that they can do that. Yeah, I think I think they have like some pretty wide latitude. Yeah, in any, sure any municipality, they, they have a uh, train station. But I think primarily what they're doing there, and I've seen them plenty of times before, is they're they're watching their bridges. So yep, and they do so many times. Okay, I was just curious. And I was not. I was not. I just want to say one last thing. I was not no. a panel raise the panelist, but but I'm glad that we. I tried to vote in favor of of the stop um, stop sign on Barry by the school. So I'm glad that got approved. Um, Rockland and Harmon, I think was that, I think that was the, the sidewalk. Is it, uh, Tina, is this, I don't think this one's yours, is it? Rockland, I think it's the, yeah, it's, it's a school. So, uh, everybody else doesn't know, I, I'm um, Tina Maraska. I'm, besides from being the Parks and Rec Commission Chair, I'm the chairperson of Safe Routes to School for Large Mountain Marriott Schools. Welcome. Um, this was something, and Dan is always at our meetings. Um, we've been talking about for years, like that. It's the, sh the part of Rockland that's a train bridge to Waverly, right? Is that what you're talking about? Can you speak louder? The, where the train bridge to yeah, Waverly. you need to speak in a microphone for um, yes. Actually, I don't know if the, if the microphones are on because if I'm going to be taping to do the minutes, I'm not going to hear her. Um, I can talk. Yeah. <laughs> I can <laughs> yeah, microphone. Oh, you can move on. <laughs> right here on video. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a good. Thank you. you hear me, right? I just don't know if it's the same thing we're talking about. Yes, that's it. Oh, this is the with Waverly, the corner there. Right. Oh, okay. So we always talked about it in St. Bruce's school because there's a lot of kids that walk home from the high school and the middle school and go that way. Um, and there's no sidewalk on that part. Um, it, it's actually even too narrow for cars to drive and then making it even worse when kids are walking. That's crazy. And well, on the side that there's no parking, there's a big couple of big rocks that you have to, they're almost in the road and you mm -hmm. have to like avoid them. And I wanted to take a picture of it, but I never got there today. There is a yellow line painted, but if you look at it, when there's cars parked, there's no way there's enough room on the road for cars. And then the Google uh, Earth shot is from like less than a month ago. Yeah. So. so. You can see exactly what. 
I tried to take the pressure off. Oh, okay. But things were okay. okay. Yeah, uh, let me, uh, I'm going to share the screen so uh, the other members of the committee uh, wish you can see it. Yeah. This is, yeah, the sidewalk ends here. Um, so you're asking about the to have this extended, right? Well, but if you keep going right. there. Now, where that white car is, usually there's a car parked in front of it also. There's always no parking spaces there because there's always cars parked. Okay, can, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we recently uh, oh, removed the parking space. That's what that. Oh, no, okay. So in front of that white car, that that parking space was removed. Okay. Can you turn it so that you look at the road going up the road? Or the other way? Sorry. The other way. Like, there is not enough room there for our cars without going over the WL line. So when the kids are walking, some of them are walking on this side on the dirt and the rocks. The other side, they're having to walk through cars and sometimes even into the street. So, I mean, we've talked about this for years and years and have never been able to come up with a solution. Um, I, so to me, I feel like the only thing you can do is not have parking there. It, I know it's, Parking's limited and a treasure, but I just, if you could, I would say look at it when school's being dismissed because it's really dangerous. It's really, like, if you could see it when school's being dismissed, it's really dangerous. Hey, you can even see it just in the still shot. You mentioned, Tina, that it's been an issue for years. What's been kind of the um, blocker on anything getting done, or has it just been? Like, well, Dan's been trying to help us, but mm -hmm. I think part of it, Dan, you said was the easement. Yeah, um, well, yeah, the yeah. other side's not the village property, and there's, <laughs> I would imagine that would cost millions of dollars to remove the rock. Well, I so maybe uh, a maybe I'll, I can offer a suggestion. Yeah, maybe it. like a, a dual recommendation from Safe Routes to School Committee and, and the Traffic Commission asking the village to look at this corridor from basically the town border to the the, the railroad bridge. Is that a fair uh, area? Yeah, I mean, I think before you cross over the train bridge, it's fine because yeah. the sidewalks on both Yeah, that's what I said. It's kind of the corridor between right. the town border and um, at, uh, Hickory, uh, Hickory Grove. When you come across that bridge, are, is there a sidewalk as soon as you leave the bridge on the right side where Sarah Newman is? Yes. Yeah, yeah no, it, I think there's sidewalks all the way down to uh, um, the intersection with Palmer. Let me just. Uh, Not on, on, the, on this side. There's, there's no sidewalk once you get off the bridge. There is a sidewalk on the bridge. Yeah. When you leave the bridge. On the other side, there's a sidewalk. When you get off the bridge, the sidewalk Both just sides. stops. So you have sidewalk here, here. Yeah, no, so, but I think uh, what um, yeah, Laura's asking about was just the- was piece of this was missing. Yeah. I but you're, you're asking about the corridor from the bridge to right. Palmer. So yeah, it does look, it, it's, it is sidewalked. If that's uh, a term. Yep. I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea, Dan. Okay. I mean, it's like the, if there is a property concern, if it's someone else's property or there's huge boulders there that would be difficult to remove, like, you know, we could just leave that. And what's within our purview is the parking spaces right there. And the fact that this has been an issue for so long, kids are walking there, et cetera. Like, to me, it seems like a no brainer. Okay. Can you go back to the intersection at Waverly? At I agree. And if you can't remove the spots, permanently you can avoid parking during peak times of 
school crossing, school time, seven, no parking no from parking 630 there. to nine, no parking from I mean, 230 to seven. To four. Right. Yeah. yeah that's that's good. Good. So also there. now at, here, first of all, cars don't stop at any of those stop signs ever. Um, but that crosswalk there, has been newly painted and it's great, but most of the kids are walking this way. Because right. it's most of the kids that live in the flats that have to walk back and forth. So there's no, like, could a crosswalk be painted on all four sides? Maybe that'll make cars more aware and want to stop more. Like it's, I actually, the bush that's near that stop sign, I had DPW remove it. <laughs> so now you can see the stop sign because that was another, you couldn't, when you were stopped at that stop sign, you couldn't see to turn right, like if cars were coming from the right. So they removed all those bushes. So now it's more visible and you can see the cars coming. Um, but if crosswalks could be painted all four ways, maybe the cars would stop stop signs more too. <laughs> we have an idea of like, um, who is parking in those spots? Like, is, is it residents or is it, I don't because it's know. a bit of an industrial area. But there's also yeah. like where that black Jeep is, there's always a car parked behind it and it's so close to the corner too. And there's no sign that says no parking here to corner. And, and that, and we're going to bounce off of each other with, and it leads into what I was saying, <laughs> that this general area needs to be revamped because that behavior is rampant. And it's dangerous. I mean, especially yeah. since it's so close to a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And if there was a crosswalk going the other way, the car would be in the crosswalk. Absolutely. And, and there will be fallout, but the benefit outweighs the fallout. I hate to put I mean, this I on the residents. I'm wondering if those two cars, if they have driveways, yeah. they, if their houses, they own the houses and they can park in the driveway. Yeah, the driveways, yeah. Do you see driveway? The only driveway I mean, is further down. There's the also there. a side road. I know. Right yeah. to the left there, that they could probably park. Is it the cars that are parking there? I mean, because that's like the area there is like a quasi residential slash commercial area. Is it possible that those people are some of the workers that work kind of down back where you know some of the businesses are and are parking just parking up that way? It could be, it could be from the yeah. apartment complexes, it could be, it could be. Could be going to the train too. They could be going to the train, and that's that's a notoriously historic issue. That and cars are left on streets for days. They go on vacation. They leave their car parked. Park over there. It, it's private homes. People who live there. Yeah. People, people are not parking there and going elsewhere. Well, not there, but I don't know about the other spots. You guys, you know, Mr. Chimney's there. He's got a lot of workers. They park there on a regular. So. Yeah. That's that. I can't I think of the name. That's right, Mr. Chimney. That's what I was thinking of. The car that I was talking about that's always parked too close to the intersection is always the same car. So I don't know if it's and it's not there in the picture though. Yeah, you know, if you revisit situations like this in Terrytown, uh, in Tuckahoe, Eastchester, there are many, many streets. And we've gone over this, Dan, numerous times since 2012. That there are no, there's, there's no parking on many streets for, for just cause, where residents are realigned to park in their driveways rather than to take up street parking. You know, but sometimes we have to take a look at that for the benefit of growth. And, and, and overall safety. I mean, it, or what would be the next step? You can make this a one-way street, and I don't think we want to do that. But we do want to consider that you know everybody living in the area, and that's all filtering into the biggest and the highest condensed area within our village. Yeah, I think, and um, this street inherently is a double yellow. We have kids walking on it, like in terms of prioritization, at least in my opinion, you need to prioritize their safety more so than the businesses or heck, even the residents. I hate to say it. Um, I, I think it's a whole revamp, like yeah. a whole parking yeah. situation. If we have cars parked corner to corner, everywhere. and that's everywhere, everywhere you cannot make your right or left hand turn. 
that is everywhere. Like even the part of the picture is over the yellow lines because there's no room. Yeah, I want to recommend um, like the dual recommendation, Dan. I think that's a good idea for one to um, either paint a line or install signs for the no parking. I, I, I can, you know, ask our traffic engineer to give us a quote for a, like a, a little bit of a traffic study in this area to see what can be done to enhance uh, the How long is that going to take? I don't know. I, I you know, it, it depends. Like, you know, a year at least something needs to be done in the meantime or at least if you paint the crosswalks so maybe at least the cars will stop at stop signs and legitimate signs no parking here to corner subject to fine well i think i think once the crosswalk is there if that car parks there it's going to be in the crosswalk if we start with works. and i want the board's opinion as well can we start with the crosswalk and then in parallel we can work on the traffic study and i think we can go as far to um Come up with the dual recommendation if it's appropriate to remove the parking, all of it, if not some of it, and um, in, increase the signage. Or to see if there's anything you can do on that side to kind of make it wider or something. I would rather not make, personally, I would rather not make the street wider. I would rather, because the wider streets just encourage people to drive faster. I think we may be benefiting. Well, it, would, it would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming up on 14 minutes. So. Okay, yeah. Do you have any, any thoughts? Or? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to uh, uh, see those crosswalks put in. Um, you know, I walk uh, walk this area, you know, at least once a month, and I never see any anything safe or positive going on there, especially when there's there's kids walking to and from school, um, car speed. I think uh, the crosswalks are a good step. Having a, a traffic study done, uh, figuring out how we can get a sidewalk so there's safe egress for for kids going to school. I mean, I think it's imperative. So the dual the dual push, um, I think, uh, is what what I would support at this point uh, and get the ball rolling because we we've been talking about this and um, you know it's a, it's really I, I think it, sadly uh, it's an accident waiting to happen. Well, thanks, Ryan. Okay, uh, let me make a motion to start with um, the. Crosswalk painting across all uh, sides, I guess, of the intersection. All in favor? I uh, second. 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 Okay. And then we just say all. And then, Dan, can we make the? Do we have to make a motion for the traffic study as well? No, I, I, well, you can. Yeah, you can make a recommendation. I can, I'll start by just asking for a proposal first. And, okay. You know, if it's, I, I, I don't think it's gonna be that, that, that much. Is like an initial study? Um, and so if it is, I'll let you know. Okay. So just uh, in house? No, I, I, would, I would reach out to uh, uh, Matt Carmody, who's a traffic engineer. Um, you know, we're still in the process of trying to hire a uh, full time village engineer. Just to clarify, when the crosswalks put in, at least one parking spot is. Well, I mean, I, I, I'll, I want to just, you know, I'll, I'll talk to our. Traffic engineer, have him lay out everything, make sure it's uh, done properly. I, one comment. I think before removing any parking spaces along that street, you need to consult with the people in those houses. If they don't have driveways and they depend on parking in front of their house for, for parking, I don't think it's appropriate to remove their, their parking space. What is that? Is that a consideration right now to remove those parking spaces? Because I, I mean, what I would, if, if that was the case, and that was a recommendation that was made, which would go to the board, you know, typically the board asks us to notify the adjacent homeowners who be impacted by this and okay. let them know that this is an item under discussion. One last comment for, for uh, Michael. You know, we're not removing a parking spot, but let's say hypothetically put down the crosswalk tomorrow. You know, you could make the case that where they're parking is illegal. It created a parking spot. Well, that was my question whether yeah. the crosswalk, you know, is drawn you know, until across the street by the Yeah, I, I, I think the only traffic control device or the only traffic control device is it's illegal to park next to or within a certain stop amount sign. of stop signs, and you can't park in a, an intersection that's controlled by a, uh, a traffic light or actually any intersection. But yeah, I think state law is. As far as the crosswalk. 
Yeah. Well, you can't park in it. Yeah, <laughs> you can't park in a crosswalk, but you can park on the side. Uh, you know, outside of a crosswalk. I don't think. I don't think the parking's a problem. I didn't, I never noticed that there was there is a sidewalk there. Yeah. Where those cars are parked in the sidewalk isn't a problem. It's more like where those two white cars are because it gets more. When it narrow. curves, it gets narrow. Yeah. Uh, it looks so like, like if you were going to look at the parking spots, I don't think you would need to look at those first. Do you? Well, yeah, it, it would definitely the appear that. Why does the sidewalk not be? Because the sidewalk ends yeah, right there. This. It stops. Yeah. So maybe where the sidewalk Well, I think you have a utility pole there. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure that I, I don't know what the size of the public right of way is over there either. Uh, that can vary, you know, you know, street to street. I mean, or even if those bushes were cut, at least the kids can walk on the grass. Yeah. Well, we can, um, that's, that's a... But again, if it's there, crossing it. Well, no, no, you can't, you, if it's a public right-of-way, you can't impinge a public right-of-way, uh, and especially if it's a, a walking area. And, uh, you know, you, that, would, those, that type of thing works for any any location oh, where you have a code enforcement has to come in and well for the for the bush yeah let's get that we'll get there i think we'll start with the crosswalk and the traffic study and then yeah, cool. yeah i think yeah. that's a great moment thank you well thank you tina so then um for the next old the safe streets parking concern is, is this the um the issue with the school with the um parking behind the school or is this related to it was in the American High School reading program, wasn't it? Oh, with that. No, that is that is new business. Which about Pape's Park? Oh, I'm sorry. No, number number eight. Oh, right. That would actually be talked about. Yeah, at the meeting. meeting. So, um, I don't know the street maybe you can go whatever. Um, I'm sorry. I might be able to find it. Right. Carpenter. When you go all, if if you go up Rockland. Yeah. Um, you have to go through Rockland. Yeah. To the high school. When you get to the town center, you have to go right or left. If you go right, I think it's Carpenter. Right. Is that your thinking? Maybe that sounds right. Um, right. The wrong way. I'm sorry. Okay, that's definitely the wrong way. <laughs> okay, I don't know how to get out of this. You're on 95. Yes. Yes, I, 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 I think I, I will make a recommendation that this board not uh, try to deal with traffic safety issues on 985. <laughs> Down low. Right there. Well, they did the paving, Dan, so the speed deterrents are removed. So this side where the cars are parked right now is fine. There are like, cars parked there. The students are going Residents leave, the students take their spots. This side of the street is no parking between eight and four right now. Yeah. Um, the problem is all of the like underclassmen who drive park along these streets and further down past the town center and in those other streets. So they all walk this way and the kids that are walking to school from the other part we were looking at all walk this way and they all come on the street. So you have hundreds of kids in the morning and the afternoon walking. And when there are cars parked on this side, it's really difficult to drive through. Because I, for one, drop my kids off back here when I drive them to school. And to maneuver around the cars and the kids, makes it really dangerous. Yes. So I had asked Brian if we could change the middle parking seven thirty to four because school starts at eight. So I would say between seven forty five is like a really busy time. Um, it, but again it's forcing too Dan remember we spoke about this and we um I uh, I sent an email to Tina at this point it was a it was probably back in May or June about if the sign shouldn't actually be no parking, it should be no stopping or no standing during those time frame, during the time frame. Yeah, you know, because I think that there was a concern about drop off and pickup activity on Carpenter. In, at pickup time, drop off's not a problem, cars, except for a couple of cars that think it's okay to stop at the stop sign and let their kids out of the road. Um, pickup time, which is like 
240, there are all cars lined up waiting for their kids to come out. Um, it's not as bad, I feel like, because they're not, the kids aren't all coming out at the same time, the cars aren't all leaving at the same time, kind of. I don't, but I, I mean, it is, it would definitely be safer. I just don't know what the cars are. There you go. I work at Nourishell High School, and we have this situation tenfold. So the problem solved and around City Hall as well for parking for employees and residents, public streets have been taken away during the course of the day and there's no parking except for employees of the school district between the hours of seven and four. When we come down Clove Road and Clove Road is probably something similar to this and all around Clove Road and all around the high school, you have your underclassmen parking on the street. So the, those spots are mapped out for them. But the buffer is that we do have enforcement from both the Nourishell Police Department and the school district has their security guards out there ensuring the safety of the students in the streets because the streets are rotating around that. It's a public street circling around Nourishell High School like a track. So, you know, instead of- Are they directing traffic or- They are directing traffic. They're, they're moving they're traffic. Officers. They're police officers and your security guards are at, your, your security guards are at every opening of the school all around the track. In New York State, the only people who can direct traffic are police officers and peace officers. Uh, Which they are, but- yeah. The, the Maronick doesn't even have security guards out there. Well, so the <laughs> so <laughs> that's where I was going with this. So it's a larger scale school and a larger scale operation. So the only way we can help this situation is by cutting out parking during the course of that day and applying enforcement so the students are safe because they're using that as a byway to walk back and forth. They're in the middle of the street. Well, and the pizza truck parks are too, mm -hmm. too when cars are coming to pick up their kids. Well, so okay. Uh, what usually? So uh, let me offer an alternative, which is uh, not necessarily an all-day parking restriction, but you make it a, which is you know, it's an enforcement issue because you have to dedicate resources to go keep going back and forth. Is a time restriction. So I it, don't think cars are parking there all day long. Okay. It's just during certain times. They're not leaving because they don't have to move their cars to leave right now in the morning. So if it could be starting at 7 30 instead of 8 o'clock and they're gone by 7 45, then I don't think it would be as big as a problem. So would that be would that be more of an imposition on the homeowners or the yeah? Well the precedent's already there. There's no parking at eight. Is it a big change? Why well, are, are you asking? To just change to just it the hours. eight to yeah. four to make it seven thirty to four. And I honestly don't even think you need to four. You could probably do three thirty if you did seven thirty to three thirty. Because by by three fifteen, I think it's all done. I mean ultimately it's an enforcement issue. Uh, yes, but the, right uh, now yeah. the cars are allowed to park at Till 8 a.m. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not making yeah, okay. a bad job. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, if 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 there if there's a change to a parking restriction or a establishment parking restriction, there's there's an expectation right. it will be enforced. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't we don't put you know we don't establish signs and for we don't put up signs that we don't intend on enforcing. Absolutely. How would we roll that out though? Would that be something that the police department could ensure got rolled out first of September? To culture. Well, it would be just the residents there, right? right? You, and you, if it's if it's a it's a problem during the school year, yeah, you know, is it does it need to be a a, a year round restriction, or is it a year round restriction right now? Or you could probably do September first to June thirtieth, right? The no turn on reds are. If, is the existing restriction year round? I think so. I'm not sure, but I think so. Yeah, I, I could. 
hazard a guess that I've never seen. I, I can hazard a guess that during the month of August, enforcing that's not a high priority no. for the police department. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a yeah. I, mean, I said ultimately it's it's a, a matter for of, of enforcement, whatever is uh, recommended. But I, I, you know, uh, again, I mean, is that an official recommendation coming from Safe Routes to School as well, or? I think yeah. I think yeah. if you need me to write something. Yeah, yeah, I think that that would be if you, if you could just change it to start at seven thirty instead of eight o'clock. Yeah. Or and if you or, want, if you yeah. want to I end think, it earlier, I think pending um, the recommendation, just so we have a document, the recommendation from the Safe Streets for School to, okay. and I looked at the sign. The sign says no parking eight to four Monday to Friday school days. Okay, so oh, okay. okay, the president, it's already there. Yeah. It's just giving it, you know, make it seven a.m. just to make it consistent, um, but. I'd, or do you want to do 7 30 to 3 30? So it's still the same amount of time. Because well, I don't think you need it to four. What time does the first class start? Eight. Is there after is school there, or anything uh, like that? I, I imagine that it was exactly. it was four because there's probably is there a late dismissal like 3 30 or the latest they yeah. would get out is three. Yeah, and, and probably functionally. People aren't getting home until four fifteen, four thirty, five o'clock. But if you, I mean, if you did it that way, you're still it's still the same amount of lifespan time. So maybe I'm Is there an AM yeah, to eight o'clock bill? Yeah, I, I, it's, I think the, the end time as long as it's not like seven p.m. Uh, it's a, a, a minimal impact if it's three three thirty or four o'clock. I, I don't think it. Okay. Yeah, it makes difference one way or the other. All right, so um, pending the recommendation from Safe Streets to Schools, I'd like to make a motion to extend or increase the um, amount of time, which is no parking on Carpenter Place behind the school. Or, or amend the existing restriction. Amend the existing yep. restriction. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The time is to be determined. Some day, yeah. Some is oh, Ryan and Gary. Sorry, I don't think we heard you. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Right, so I think the other items of old business, like I think we've covered or have action plans on, right? Um, A lot of them. Are, I talked about uh, Hawthorne Gardens. Um, uh, the light at Palmer and Rockman. I think I emailed you the report that was provided yeah. by. I think it, it there need to be if that's something that you know wants to be recommended. It, it's more. It's not just as simple as it. That needs upgrading. That light. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not not cheap. And I think the South Barry Avenue and Dunyan Drive no parking. It got cut off from. The agenda, and we have Mr. Chifletti here. Okay. Yeah, I was going to open it to uh, other folks in the room in case that I know over email there were items that may not have been included. We can always talk about that. When we printed the agenda, we're oh, missing just, 15 through 21. I think. Can I have that? This is the complete list. Oh, okay. These, these are the old business that will cut off. Okay. So, excellent. So, yeah, Claflin, Hawthorne Gardens, Bowood. Yeah, this one we just spoke about. Okay. Okay. Brian, can I just, before we go, in, I just wanted to make one observation just for a minute. Um, the the uh, crosswalk and road dieting that occurred at um, Fenimore and Prospect, uh, that new crossing where they bumped out those curbs, um, that, that project that uh, was installed, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. And absolutely transformational for traffic on, um, on Fenimore. Um, it has it has slowed traffic. Uh, people stop for people uh, regularly over there, and I think it um, it's indicative of what's possible in our village. That when we narrow the roads and make drivers uncomfortable, uh, our streets do become safer for for pedestrians. Uh, so I think that's a good model uh, for the for this commission and the board of trustees to consider. Uh, as we as we think about improving uh, the quality of life in our village, it's also very expensive. It, it's a good point, Ryan. It's a good point. Well, it's all. Who, who is that? Who said that was expensive? 
Well, it's, it's, a, it's, great. It's, it, it's, it's a transformational uh, street. Yeah. I think. It, and it may, it may be, it may be expensive, but I think as, um, you know, uh, citizens of the town, I think that, uh, you know, we are, are doing okay, uh, budgetary wise, and, and those things are transformational. And, and I, I don't know if we can put too much of a price tag on safety. I, I will say that once we're finished with Halstead Avenue, when we got that four million dollar grant, that's that's going to be this project on steroids because we're talking about thirty eight, you know, pump outs and is that all the way down to Harrison, like the Harrison border, the wow. entire length of it. And it works. I mean, I've driven the street a few times just to test drive it, I'll, just uh, to see where, how how I react. And it, it draws your eye. Yeah. It makes you look. It makes yeah. you slow down. That's that's the purpose. Yeah, it, it's it, in many ways it's counterintuitive because you you expect a, a stop sign to do that, but it, it really is it's remarkable. No, no, the board uh, the board is on board with that. So, like I said it's making making drivers uncomfortable, making Thanks. turning driving from an unconscious activity into a conscious activity. But the um. So let's move on to uh, the Claflin Avenue, the no stopping. Do we have um, who's the I gentleman? I don't think he's here. This lady. Oh, uh, you have control? Or do I have control? Of the screen? Yeah. Uh, you. Uh, I thought maybe he was here. She, she said he, uh, her husband would be here, but uh, we uh, table it. I don't have Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Bookbinder. Good Gonzalez and Catherine B. Oh, so oh yeah, he is on Julian Viewfinder. Do you mind just promoting him then? Uh, uh, okay. Hi, Julian. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Fine. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for dialing in. Uh, thank thank you for uh, taking the time. Do you, do you want me to just go into the issue or? Or, yeah, or, you go into the issue. The, the context, I think Dan will probably be able to have a response to it. Uh, if not, I think collectively we'll be able to add color, but no, go for it, Julian. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thanks again for the opportunity to address the committee. I think my wife in February or so had, had brought this issue to the attention of the committee. It's really just a question. We're, we're residents on Claflin, uh, where it ultimately empties out into, um, into, uh, I'm drawing a blank now. What's the main? Like Rushmore, right? Rushmore. Yes, thank you, Rushmore. Um, and through uh, basically a series of sign changes that went into place over the last, I don't know, how many ever months, uh, possibly related to all the construction that's going on the street, possibly not. We're basically in a situation where for that stretch of the residential street, there's now no longer parking permitted on either side. So we weren't sure if that was an intentional decision and if it was what the basis was for it or if it was unintentional or temporary due to the construction or, or, or what was going on. So Dan, this, when this was originally brought up, I thought that DPW went out and moved where the- Yeah, I, so I, I think the original uh, request came from, I think, I think it was the homeowner at the end or the second one in. <laughs> I think it was asked to extend uh, a no stopping restriction. And I thought it was just, uh, you know, he, the, the person who made the request understood that it was the parking in front of his house and that um, it was only going to impact that, that property uh, in terms of his ability to park in front of it. Uh, I, 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 I recall that the, the discussion came up that um, we confirmed in the field that the sign was in the right location. Um, I mean, I can, I can certainly look at it, talk to DPW. Um, if, if the sign needs to be relocated, um, we can certainly look at the, make sure we have the right measurement distance in the code. Because that, that ultimately that's dictates where the sign is. So, so just from a, from, from a factual perspective, I mean, so right now, there's no parking anywhere on Claflin on, I guess it would be the west side of the street, right? The side that is runs parallel to um, to Orienta or as close to Orienta. And then there's this, the, the, I guess the east side of the street where this issue is. 
And right now, essentially what we have is continuous no parking signs on that side, uh, starting from about where the street bends and stops running sort of uh, parallel with Orienta and then makes the bend to empty out into Rushmore. So right now it, it impacts give or take 10 houses um, going down that street. It's definitely not limited to a single house if the ultimate basis was this was just protecting one home owner's lawn. Um, it's currently knocking out parking on either side of the street for like the last 10 houses as you drive down Claflin towards Rushmore. I think this is the location of the bend. Uh, is that the sign right there? So it's, well, no, this, well, this is from, okay, this is June. from June. Um, it says no parking, where it says slow hidden driveway ahead. No parking anytime. Hey, Dan, are you sharing that? Um, yeah, I will share it. Uh, give me one second. Um, if you share it, I can I can let you guys know exactly where it starts on on you know the side of the street that used to permit yeah. parking. Yeah, I'm just gonna go back up. And one of the issues is it looks like the uh, we have two different street views. One from last month, but the other one's from October of last year. So I don't know if that. Uh, uh, do you see the screen, Mr. Buckbinder? Yes, I do. Thank you. Is, is, this, is this the sign you're talking about? Yes, yes. So that, that sign precludes parking from there all the way down to Rushmore on that side of the street. Okay. I, okay. I, I... And then, of course, the other side, there's no parking at all. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that the, the when I when we wrote up the restrictions, it was only supposed to be for Again, and this is October. So I think what, what it, okay. Um, okay, I think what has probably happened is when we, when the commission and the board adopted the uh, new restriction, the existing, the difference between the existing sign at the bend, which Mr. Buckbinder is referring to, and the new sign creates an impression that it's probably uh, uh, no parking for the, that entire distance. Is that is that a fair summary? At, uh, as, asking me, asking. Well, yeah, I, I, is that do you agree with what I what I? I yeah, I, I, I don't even think it's an impression. I think it's if you read okay. the signs as they presently exist. There's no parking from that sign that was identified through through the through the entirety of that side of the street and okay. to, to Rushmore. Okay. Um, okay. So I think that's that's my guess is that no park that um, that original no parking sign was probably put there because of the bend in the roadway and the fact that Claflin. Uh, seem, look, appears to be a, a pretty narrow roadway. Um, so it was probably done to enhance these, uh, the site visibility. So, I mean, I, I, I can, I, I understand the issue. I can look to see if we can, if there's a way we can have the cake and eat it too. Although I, I mean, that'd be great. Uh, two, two thoughts. I think that's actually a new sign. You guys have to check. I think that one went up recently because it used to be further back and then it got moved there. But I guess the other piece is, totally understand it's narrow there but I, I would think that the solution would be just precluding and enforcing no parking on one side of the street I wouldn't think it would require I don't think it's so narrow that you can't you know that you have to preclude it on both sides uh, certainly that's not the case yeah. on a number of the arteries that that open up into Rushmore nearby yeah I I, I I'm trying to think back can I comment on it? Oh, sorry. It, I'm, um, I'm not I could be wrong. Perhaps Lou and Dan can weigh in on this because I know that the issue of parking came up at a uh, board of trustees meeting in the last month or so about removing. I thought that it had to do with people who are visiting Harbor Island and using that street to park and that the people who live there were concerned that 
visitors to Harbor Island were monopolizing their parking. Did that have something to do with why, I don't why recall, that? I don't recall that. Right. Well, no, I, 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 but I recall there def, that. There definitely, sorry, there definitely was an issue with the board where you removed the parking. That's what, that's what installed that sign. The board of the board of trustees discussed that and made that determination. I'm asking whether that came about because of people visiting Harbor Island using that street to park, and that the people who lived on that street were not happy about that. I, my that make sense? my recollection, and it, it, the, and I, I don't this I don't recall this being at, the, at someone discussing at the board in the last couple of months, uh, but the. Uh, the issue was in general, uh, you know, people were parking there uh, because it was allowed. And um, I think because there's no, they, they kept, you know, destroying the, the grass. They were parking on the grass. They were parking on the grass. And, you know, this guy was repairing his lawn every year. Is, is there, a, I didn't see a place over there where the parking would seem, um, Appropriate. Uh, it's all January. Okay. So was that? I didn't see a spot there where, where it looked like it would be good for any parking at all. It looked pretty. It looks pretty narrow. I mean, up until February, there there had been parking on one side of the street. I, my basic understanding is there's one resident who was fed up fed up with occasionally, you know, having six inches of grass torn up, which. I guess may be a basis for putting signs at their property lines, but I'm not sure it's a basis for knocking out parking for 10 houses down, down the street. Yeah, so the, prior to um, uh, January, the restriction had been from um, Rushmore Avenue to a point 195 feet thereof. Um, and those are some pretty large lots. So 175 feet is probably one, maybe two homes. And I think the, to bring it to 375 was probably another two homes. Uh, so I, but I, I, again, I think that's what, what happened was the, those two signs are so close to each other is it may have, uh, just had, I, I, I said, I think we can, I, I, I'm more than willing to take a look at it with uh, Public Works to see if there is a way to, you know, have the cake and eat it too. If there's a way we can um, reestablish some on-street parking while still protecting what was happening before. I have a question. After looking at this street and it's narrow, which many streets are in the village, and Lou is bringing up a point, maybe. Maybe the ex -fire, fire chief could shed some light. Parking vehicles on this on this street. How do you get a rig down this street in an emergency situation? Uh, it's, but these aren't two family. You know, I'm playing devil's advocate. These aren't two family homes, and you know how how are you going to get a rig down the street if somebody's parked on one side of the street and then not on the other? You know, because you could see it in the, in, in, the, in the picture that there is a car parked on the other side of the street. So in a situation like that, is, is the footage allowable for vehicles to be parked on the street as a necessity or a need? Or is safety the bigger concern? And how are you going to get a rig down the street? I, I, I think that uh, uh, ex-chief LaRocco will, may want to say something about that. I think he'll he'll give you a much more professional answer right. than I will. Yeah, let's hear first. Let's hear from Julian. Then can we uh, speak with mm -hmm. the, the chief? Mm -hmm. oh, I, the only thing I would say is I guess we shouldn't search for a basis. We should know what the basis actually was, and then determine whether the signs are in the right place. I mean, I think we should go go out to that street again because there's certainly plenty of room to get another vehicle down. There's huge construction trucks going up and down that street every day because the house next to ours got demolished and is being rebuilt. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think for quite some time, there had been parking permitted on one side of that street. If the determination is made that 150, 300 feet, whatever it is, leading into Rushmore is too narrow and it's a safety issue, so be it, but we're still over-regulating up the street where it widens out. Um, but also my understanding is that wasn't the basis for the sign change. The basis was 
uh, a single resident complaint about, you know, yard damage, and I guess complaints about the public using the street to access a public park. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> we're just trying to figure out if, if, if there's truly a basis for whatever's happened which yes. is justifiable such that we no longer are able to park on either side near our house, which, it, you know, is inconvenient relative to all the other streets in, in the area. No, that's fair. Uh, thank you, Julian. Uh, Ex-Chief LaRocco, did you have a, a comment? Yes, um, I drive multiple vehicles for the Village of Manic Fire Department. I'm a 34 year member and I'm very familiar where the area is. Um, residents of Claflin Avenue, that is our main direct response pattern as we come in off Rushmore, any Claflin Avenue address. Normally, the first and second fire trucks will respond up Claflin from the 300 block and make our way down toward Bleecker. Just so we have an eye on, clamp an eye on what we're responding to. Uh, it is extremely tight around that bend. I've driven it around it quite a few times. And um, for me to make a judgment of the width of the road, I would do a site visit. And I know Jerry knows I'm extremely thorough as the village manager because he caught me with a tape measure in my hand at Prospect in Fedemore, looking at the new uh, the new uh, sidewalk form that slows the drivers down. And I wanted to make sure I had my facts together with that one. That came out very nice. But again, I'd have to go and do a site visit and I will take the fire truck physically and I'll provide you with photographs to show you the width. Our fire trucks have a standard width of 10 to 10.5 wide before we turn either right or left. So we do have wide vehicles. Some of them are a little bit wider than the construction vehicles, especially our hook and ladder, the one with the bucket on it. That's a little bit wider and longer, not easy to turn. But I would definitely do a site visit get back to you on this with uh, factual, especially the width of the roadway. I'll have those figures in my hand. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. My answer is, You're welcome. Get there, I'll get there. Yeah. So I think, <laughs> and I don't think Mr. Butefinder is disputing the fact that, you know, the in a corner or whatever, however long it is, it's very now, there shouldn't yeah. be parking there. It's the fact that it's, you know, it's not just the corner, it goes all the way down the street. Yeah. So I think, uh, ex Chief, I think we, we would definitely appreciate that. And Dan, we'd also appreciate yeah, I, I'm more than happy. Me with uh, Andy on site. Yeah. If, if he needs me there. But I, I'll, I think give you, I'll give you a buzz, Dan. No problem. Yeah. I mean, Good I, job. It doesn't really take two people to measure a road. Mm -hmm. It's like a bad so I'll service. Pick, I'll pick up the coffee. We'll go out and take a walk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, anyone else before we move on? Or anything else from you, Mr. Futurefinder, as well? No, I would just say thank you all. Certainly, we understand yeah. if the answer is fire trucks can't get up and down, down the street. It is what it is. But if that's, you know, if there's some way to narrowly right. tailor for that issue and still allow some parking for residents, that would be great, too. Seems like you should be able to do both, as Dan said. Um, so we'll definitely take a look at it. Thanks very much. Appreciate being heard. Oh, thank you. So next time, the Hawthorne Gardens, do we have any actions on that? Or yeah, well, so um, the work order was put in uh, in, uh, in June. Uh, I let uh, uh, the, uh, the residents at Hawthorne Gardens know who, uh, who came to the meeting. Um, <clears throat> I've been talking, I, I spoke with Public Works. Um, it, there, I, I will put a little pressure on them to uh, you know, try and get this done in a timely fashion. That and the Drury Drive, because uh, I sent them those work orders at the same time. Okay. Um, I said the uh, it's a matter of, uh, you know, if we, if we need, we have to call for the utility markouts. If we don't do the work within 10 days, we have to do the utility markets again, and it's a it's a whole process. It's a, a very regimented process, but for a good reason. Yeah, cool. So, I, I, the question for the commission is: Do we leave Drury and uh, Hawthorne on our old business until they're actually done? I think we should. Or I, I can I can just ask Public Works to let me know. I understand, when but it's I think we should still leave them on our oh. old business until the work is actually completed to make sure that we're following up. That yes, just, just check in the next yeah. meeting. Oh, I mean, or I, what I'll, I'll, I can do is I'll just you know, let you know when it's been done. I can let you know by email when it's been done. And if you want to make that announcement at a future meeting, that's certainly what you can do. Okay, thank you, Dan. The, um, so the Knollwood stop sign speed bump for that one. Yeah. Um, I thought we had consensus on that to add a stop sign there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's 
Yeah, yeah Mr. Trifoletti. Uh, yes. Yes, Barry. 2020. Yes, oh, South yeah. Barry and Guion Drive. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Here, people in here. I think there were there were two there were two requests. There was a request for on Guyan Drive and a request for on South Barry, right? South Barry, no parking sign from. The uh, home at 235 South Barry to the to the uh, intersection. It's very difficult to see if somebody's parked there and making a left out of Diane Drive. The car is coming down fast or whatever. It's hard to see around that car. Also, it's hard to make a turn onto Diane Drive with this car there because it's not a 90 degree turn. It's like less than 90 degrees. And what happens is when you slow down cars pass you over the yellow line and somebody's also trying to get out of the line. I mean, it's, 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 it's an accident waiting to happen there. But I got the homeowner's approval at 235 Eugene. He's filling the agreement with putting no parking from his driveway to the intersection because people are now fishing and, you know, foreigners park right. there and everything else. As far as the uh, guy in drive, no parking, where they, they park at the stop sign. And also and the street is... The street's almost like a driveway. If you take an Uber home, I take an Uber home. They don't even see guy on the drive because it's so narrow. But the homeowner at 635 has been uncooperative. I like, sent them emails, I, I knocked at the door, I, I put a letter in his mailbox saying, give me your opinion on the no stops, no parking signs in front of the house. And him and his wife I completely ignored him. So I abandoned those stop signs completely to avoid any issues with the village and the, the traffic issues. So Eugene. Is in, in, at 235 is in full agreement. We have a homeowners association, about 45 people. I canvassed the uh, uh, officers. They all agreed in the emails that I sent in. So, I mean, it's, it's just a no parking. It's, we have two entrances to our neighborhood one on Stewart and South Barry, and one on uh, South Barry and Guyon. I'm asking for the same thing that's on Stewart. We have the same no parking, so we have better visibility. I'm asking for the same thing down at, at Guyon and South Barry. It's pretty straightforward. So, so my, my recollection, and if, if anyone has a different record, let me, let me know. But I, my recollection was uh, because state law, you can't park within either 15 or 30 feet of a stop sign. You know, that's, you know, that, that, that seemed less of a difficult thing. I think there was, you had questions or one to look at the, um, on the South Barry side a little bit more. I, I think that, that was my but I, I can't, maybe I'm misrecollecting. Yeah, but I said, yeah, I, again, you can't park within state law. You can't park within X number of feet of a stop sign unless you well, specifically a, allow it. There's a no parking sign on the uh, southern part of the intersection, but there's nothing on the uh, northern part. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, we, my recollection was was that it was the quite you had a question on the on the South Barry side. He provided a draft from yeah. the form. No, I I understand, but I, I I'm trying to re recollect what the board was discussing about this, and I said I, I think I, I I probably would have mentioned at the time that because you can't park within X number of feet of stop sign anyway, um, establishing a no parking restriction. You don't need to. It, well, I mean, you you can do it, and it's it's superfluous. But you know, um, and, and we we have done it where we've you know put up no parking signs within that kind of. I have a local, you know, have a local restriction on top of the state restriction. I mean, the we have the attachments, we have the um, evidence that you, and Mr. Trifoletti, just spoke to. It seems like a no-brainer. It does. Like that, I don't even know if it warrants. Unless I can open up to the board, I don't think it warrants further conversation. It's diligent. He's dotted it his established a no parking restriction on Guyon. It would only complement what is already in state law. Right. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to install the traffic sign. I mean, not the traffic sign, the stop sign and the no parking restriction. No, it's no, just, it's just, just no parking sign from the homeowners. No stops. 
Uh, there's already a stop sign on Guyon Drive. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend putting a stop sign on Saturday. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you don't know. Oh, I didn't. I was looking at the Google map. I didn't see the stop sign. Okay. Just from the driveway at 235 South Barry Avenue to the intersection, how much parking is exiting and entering Guyon Drive? As far as no parking signs in Guyon, the homeowner that just bought the house there has an issue with it. So I mean, yeah, he didn't tell me. But in the reply. So I would just say, you know, don't worry about those signs. Just the one on the South Barry between the uh, driveway at 225 and the intersection. Okay. And maybe maybe the people who fish the fishing, they park right at the telephone pole there, right? You know, there's no parking on, on the bridge or any place over there, but mm -hmm. Is it the entire length of 235, their frontage, or just like a certain? Oh, no, just from the from the southern part of the driveway. Okay. And and he the emails that I sent show proof from the homeowner that he's in full agreement. Which oh. they're here. Yeah, yeah which we, I was looking at them as uh, Mr. Tripletti was speaking. Okay, uh, I'll make the motion to install the, the no parking from the south portion of the driveway with 235 to the street. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah. Uh, quick question. The displaced <laughs> fisher men. Uh, uh, are there places, other places for them to uh, um, north, north, on uh, north of two thirty five? There's plenty yeah. of parking. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 parking. I think functionally it's only like one or two parking spaces, if that. Oh yeah, yeah, two, yeah, one or two park spaces. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah I, not even yeah. be that many. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah. it's. Uh, uh, we have a, a bevy of fishermen. There. Yeah, I think they, they park at the Westchester Company Station there. Right. They mostly walk. Yeah. 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 I second the motion. Second the motion. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you, Mr. Sorry you. to keep you waiting as well. Okay. Does anyone else in the room have an item on the old business that we didn't cover? We're going to get through these quick. I, the people on Zoom are from the Marion Academy School. Sandra and Christmas. Number 11 on. Uh, we have uh, Ann Good, Jennifer Gonzalez, and Catherine B. Are the new I think for the new business, though. Because the, yeah, the, the line item 11, the traffic at dismissal, like that. Well, I know that was something that um, the, the police department met with our traffic engineer on. Um, Okay. Do you mind promoting them then? Uh, I do not mind at all. Let's see. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it says uh, for Catherine B. It says allowed to talk is not available yeah, because Catherine B. is using an older version of Zoom. Oh, okay. Maybe. Anne or no, I, I put both. Anne, I, oh, okay. Yeah, I put both Anne and Jennifer. This is Anne Good, and I'm uh, on. And Barbara Micheletti, who is the outgoing PTA president, um, will be on shortly. She she thought that new business was first, so she had to deal with her kids, and she'll be back. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and Jennifer, thanks for joining. Um, the topic that you want to talk about is it the uh, line item what we have is number 11, which is Mamarin. No. Okay, so it's new business. It's no business. All right, do you mind just holding for a couple no of problem. minutes longer? Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. It's you got to ask, right? Okay, so quickly just rounding these out. Um, let's the number 11, the Mamarinic yeah. Avenue. I got those, those were resolved by the uh, fire department and, the and police, police department. department. Well, yeah, the, 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 the police and yeah, I yeah. think the police, I, I don't know if uh, the fire was there, but uh, I know, were you, were you part of that or was that no, Lieutenant Data? I, I heard about it from here, sorry. No, I'll talk to Lieutenant Falcon. I just want to look at it. I got it. Is this still a problem? Well, the, well I, I, I know that, um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I don't think we've done anything yet, but I think there's, I don't know if there's anything that required any parking uh, changes. Is this Ralph Avenue one way? This is yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is to yeah. change Ralph Avenue to a one way to remedy traffic. We agreed to do it, and 
I have you, Dan, in March to write up regulatory changes. Okay, I, I will take care of that for the next meeting. Right. And there was a lot of detailed presentations and whatnot. Yeah, the fire department put something together. Yeah, and the police like, department. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll communicate with uh, Lieutenant Gatta and, uh, um, you know, uh, write those up. Is he, is he around this week or? He'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll put that on for the July 25th agenda report. Can that be in motion before school starts so there's not this? I will, yeah, I will ask to have it. Of school? So you know, no. I motion to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually meeting. We have a um our uh, uh quarterly meeting with the um uh your town of America Village of Larchmont and the schools uh next week, I believe. So I can I can apprise that. This way they could give, you know, on, on their website, parent letters, whatever they have to do, because it'll be a confusing yeah, situation. Do that, like, the very, very end of Is that usually communicated? I, I, I haven't been around when we've done major improvements or changes to this. Uh... Usually, like, the, the, the couple of days before school. No, but it, uh, is that usually communicated from the village and the, the PTAs, or is this from the... I, I, I haven't been... Um, or safe route. Okay. Not sure. Okay. I'll I'll talk to. Uh, not the PTA because I was PTA president okay. there and I never had it. Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, Doctor Shaps or someone else from the school district will be yeah. there. I, I can ask them. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Um, the what were we up to? The Nolwood stop sign speed bump. I don't think there was ever a recommend an official recommendation on the stop sign. Can yeah. I ask what that is? Because I live over there. I can explain. Are you familiar with, with where Nolawood is? What part? Where after you come up the hill? After, so after you come up the hill. So as you come up the hill, first of all, it's a steep climb. Right. There's a sign that says children play. A number of parents from that area complain that cars come up too fast and kids play there and it's hazardous. And they wanted a stop sign at the top of the hill climbing up the road, whatever that is, so for cars to stop. I think uh, that would be dangerous. I'm sorry? I think it would be more dangerous if it stops sign there. Well, so, so we hadn't agreed to do anything, but that was the issue that kids were playing there and cars were speeding as they came up the hill because you kind of have to speed just to get up the hill. Well, and right. it was hazardous for kids playing. If you go there in person, it is a good place to play stop sign. Exactly. Right at the top of the hill or further up? Oh, I think it was board. the yeah the crowd. They, yeah. Yeah. Once you reach the, reach the top of the hill, and that's where the kids play. The neighbor said there was as like as long as traffic doesn't get backed up and your stuff is really in there. Gavin trying to turn. Because that happens no. when cars don't go. The stop sign. I don't see it. The stop sign will be at the top of the hill. I think it was the, it's the the press was for the. The Crown Court intersection. I mean, well, well, yeah, Crown Court I mean, is a separate street. They wanted a stop sign there to, or some traffic control there as well. Yeah, I mean, the I, same I, purpose that kids were playing at that location. Well, I mean, they're, they're not playing in the street. Kids right? don't play in the street there, yeah. but I can tell you it is hard to turn out of the court, and that might be a better reason. Yeah. That, well, was, that was another but, problem. But, but I, 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 visibility of, of not seeing cars coming up the hill as you're making the left turn to go down. But I, I recall that I, th I think you know the police department got the accident history. I don't think there was no. any accidents there. Um, so you know they and and you know my my yeah. spiel about you know stop signs. I would you just know. be concerned during busy times of the day. It's and I was going to. I was going to ask about this because I saw the minutes, but it, when you're turning up that hill, like you're, because I am always coming and making a left up the hill, up the hill. If it gets backed up, which there's a lot of cars that turn and go up that hill, you're going to be stuck in the middle of the Merrick Gap, huh. and it's dangerous. I don't think we ever thought of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, it's I, not I, a lot of room. I say I. I if I had a guess, I would say maybe four cars. If all the cars if hmm. were five, I, I, the most. It, it doesn't, you know. And, but, it's a, and it's a steep hill, so 
you're going to be rolling back too. Yeah. So you say three or four cars might be going nowhere at the same time. Where they can, oh, you know, we're in them. More. Oh, because when we visited it, so uh, it's, it's, it's been it's it's, it's there's you're gonna have people here. Go so during the day, during the week, at any time during the week, especially, and I mean, worse when it's like school coming in and out. So I remember the meeting in March, there was like seven or eight parents who came on. They all said the same thing that kids do play there. Their children, like three to 10 children, play they in that set area. Up on the eighth stand. On the corner, but not, they're not playing in the street. That's what the, the parents but it is very dangerous to turn out of Crown Court there. So, like, I see that as being. Well, there's a lot of parents on that. Uh, they said some children do play near the intersection. Maybe they should have. Uh, there's another, well, yeah, but there's another, there's two different spots they play. There's a blind curve. And I think the commission, we were leaning toward putting one there, weren't we? Yeah, well, uh, so the, putting one there. The, to create, you know, we, we I, I, I recommend that we, you know, follow the, what's called the manual of uniform traffic control devices. And the manual of uniform traffic control devices establishes warrants for when you do when when certain signs are appropriate. Um, for an all-way stop, it's typically if you have well, actually the warrant is uh, if there are five five accidents, well sorry, sorry five crashes uh, within a twelve month period. I gotta you know make sure I yeah but you get the yeah. <laughs> um, or I, or if there's some like, visual obstruction issue. Um, I know the I said the police department ran the accident data. I, I think it was, you know, three accidents over five years, and I, I, most most crashes are are the result of yeah. driver error, uh, uh, whether they you know run through a stop sign or they're just not paying attention. Um, but I think it, it, it my recollection it definitely did meet the warrant based on that. You know, it, I think that, you know it is a little you, it is a little wonky in terms of the geometrics of the intersection, but you know. It, if I can also just yeah. the, when you're when you're coming up the hill, the house that's right at the top on the corner of Crown Court, there's so many bushes. That's what I was going to say. Is yeah. that can I you think have that if yeah, that many. was removed? It would be make the visibility better for the people turning out of the crack court and coming up the hill because as you're coming up that hill, you can't see what's in. Yeah, the, I, um, I can talk to. I'll, I'll talk to the court enforcement. Here, you know. may, may I ask who is speaking now? I'm sorry, from my house, I can't see who the speaker is. I'm Tina Moresco. I was talking before from St. Bruce School. From where? I, that's where I live. Uh, okay. Yeah. What is your name? Tina Moresta. Okay, thank you. I, I just didn't know your name. Thank you. Sorry. I'll I'll, I'll talk to co-enforcement tomorrow. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dan. Because I think that's a good. I mean, the, the, the photos on Google Earth are from last month, and you know, June. It's as green as ever, and yeah, it's all brush. Be amazed what you can do when the, the changes that when someone cleans up their property. Right. I think that's sufficient for now, unless anyone else, and we can move on. I don't know. I mean, there was Have a lot decided of, to do it, anything about putting a stop sign there or not. Well, I mean, there was a lot of interest. Sure. Like I said, six, seven, eight parents came on. There, it is a blind curve. It is dangerous. I didn't think about uh, Tina's yeah. point about the cars going up. Well, no, I mean, I it doesn't meet the war. It doesn't meet the warrants. Yeah. Um, ultimately, that's a policy decision. I, mean, I, if 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 you want to make that recommendation, to the board will bring that recommendation to the board. If the board asks me. In my opinion, is it warranted? I would say it's not warranted, but this is the recommendation of the traffic commission. I think what we do know is that that area is in dire need of being cleaned up. So, like before going further, we still hear from the public and the residents that you know the speed and the blind spot is still a concern. After that area is potentially cleaned up, I think we could revisit it further. But no, we didn't consider the backups of people coming back, coming no, off of Marion Avenue. Like that didn't even enter our conversation. So. Yeah, is there any parameters as far as putting a stop sign so close to a traffic light? Like, is there is it supposed to be a certain distance? Because that, I mean, that. that I, I can check. I, I'll, I can ask our traffic engineer. I don't think they're, I haven't seen it. and But it also doesn't yeah. meet the standard in the, what is it, the manual of traffic? Yeah, maybe, you know, for traffic. So why control. doesn't it meet the standard? 
because if, uh, for, to create to establish an always stop, the warrant is you should have five crashes in a twelve month period. One, one stop. No, that was the consideration was all way. I thought it was just at the top of the hill. No, I, 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 th I think that was the request was to have uh, always stop. I don't remember. I don't see that. And if we're just on Nova, yeah, it's I still. Specifying yeah, I mean, usually the. Um, we can go back to you know, the, the, the road that carries more traffic yeah, would have yeah, the right of way. You wouldn't, you would have uh, a road approaching the road that carries more traffic if there's any stop signs, they'd be on those roads. Let's Not, start with the DPW, the recommendation. We can, because, you know, we have diligence. We should go back and look at the Zoom, see if they're actually asking for the four way stop, okay. and then we okay. could debate well, we can it. Further. Change it. We yeah. Change it to the one way. Find, find suggestions for a situation like that and see if we could find comparisons it, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and see if we could find anything similar yeah, in other communities. Standard. Say, I mean, yeah. What, what, what yeah, we do know, you're, I mean, from a, from a safety perspective, the, you know, there is no accident history up there, or it's it's a sporadic accident history. We have it's not there hasn't been an endemic problem of, of traffic accidents at right. that intersection. I mean, if I had to guess, the accident is because the people coming out of Crown Court can't see. I, yeah. Tina, I, have, have you have you ever read accident reports? Don't worry, I'll be sure. No, 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 no. I, I, I it, it's <laughs> honestly the the reason I ask is I you know, know sometimes they can be a bit amusing because of, it, it is really Why? just such carelessness on some of the, the parts of some of these drivers. Um, you know, I've I've read accident reports for it. It's just to hear how the drivers describe how the accident occurred is. Uh, harrowing, and uh, I can see the lieutenant smiling. So he's read a couple in his day, I imagine. All right, let's move on to the light at Palmer and Rockland. Dan, you touched on that earlier, and that's like yeah. a yeah. The, the light would to add a dedicated turning phase would require an upgrade of hardware in that light, and that's 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 where you're getting the real dollars. I, th I think I I may have emailed yeah, you the. In the magnitude of several hundred thousand dollars. No, well, I, I don't think it was, it was several hundred thousand dollars. It was it was a major investment. So, but before any further, can we? Can we the JBL still doesn't. Allow we're not going to pay for that, and we just remove it off the uh, old business and go and go on to something else. Is there well, any that, further discussion? That's not my call. I'm asking. Um. So, like, my only contention is that we concede. That it's an issue there. That issue is, it, I, you know, I, I is is the issue that, uh, it, you know, my argument is, you know, it's not there for convenience sake. It's it's there to, you know, control traffic at heavily traffic intersections to make to uh, avoid accidents that would be greater than accidents that were caused if you do have a light. And there's no record of accidents there. I, I don't recall, but I, I the, the request that came in, it seemed like the person who was making the request more for convenience. Yeah, it's, to make yeah, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. I live yeah. at that corner. It's difficult and it's inconvenient and it's troublesome, but I don't know that it's worth the cost of whatever it was to yeah. make it better. And that also came to St. Bruce's school? Yep. I think that, yeah. that, that, that turn. Or that light, but I think it's only busy during school drop off and pick up. And yeah. It's not an issue any other time. Well, when the, the gentleman called in about it, it was around the, the holidays and like during the Christmas time, it's impossible to make the left there. <laughs> Again, a, a, a traffic light is not there for convenience, a, a traffic light is there because it controls traffic intersections that you know, heavy traffic. Uh, honestly, you know. It, it prevents major accidents by allowing for like minor accidents. You know, you you know when you hit someone in, from and behind it, at five not, miles an hour, it's it, it's not holding up traffic because there's clearly two lanes. Cars going straight can go, go on the right, so it's not creating a yeah. It's not a matter of path. safety; it's a matter of convenience. No. So we could remove it. Did we all agree on that? 
we have to put that up for a while. Well, I'll, I'll put it up. Well, I'll make a motion. I was looking. I mean, it's very difficult to make a left turn. It's, it's difficult, but it's a point. If you're making a left turn and people are going straight, trying to cut you off, and I guess it's a cost benefit thing. It's going to cost hundred thousand dollars to change the traffic. The, the other thing is, if you put a designated lane in there, you're going to back the traffic up coming the other way, which is also bad. Right. Isn't that a county road? Don't you need the county to do it anyway? No, it's uh, no. We we own the traffic lights, so we own the only traffic light on uh, any county road in the village that is owned by Westchester County is the traffic light at the um, uh, well. Now it's the uh, CVS shopping center, as opposed to the former A and P shopping center. Okay. Yeah, we own we we own all those lights. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They own the drainage and the road. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you, Michael, but like I trying to weigh the convenience versus, you know, what's feasibly going to get done. So, Laura, do you have any thoughts on? I, I really, I, I would like to see it cleaned first mm -hmm. and then see, see if there's any further complaints. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, want to say what? Clean, uh, the, we were talking about. The oh, sorry. No, we moved on to we moved on. Uh, Rockland sorry, and Palmer. I was writing. Rockland yeah. and Palmer. No, I don't have any input. Okay. Yeah, Ryan and Gary. I'm fine with that. Okay. I didn't click. Yeah, it's fine. Tompkins Ave and Spruce Street Crosswalk. Um, uh, that that's um, that, that's a request that came in from uh, the former chief, the, actually the former former chief, uh, uh, Chief Del Bianco. Uh, we're going to have our traffic engineer uh, work on that. Okay. The Taylor's Lane and Boston Post Road. Uh, Tina, did you have a comment on that one? Or are you familiar with Taylor's Lane? Well, that's uh, in Ryan. Yeah. yeah. I, I, All right. Really. So. Taylor's Lane has to do with kids walking to school during that long street on right. Taylor's Lane. So we are only dealing with the Marinick schools, not right now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So. Right used to have a safe route. I don't know why they don't. I could reach out to their, their would it be their PTA or? Probably. Yeah. I, I know um, one of our judges was formerly the head of the Marinick. Uh, wow. Um, uh, safe routes to school, uh, Judge Gallagher. I spoke to him a couple of years ago just about traffic safety. I, I don't know that they're that active. We, had, we we applied for a grant under the Safe Routes to School program, but again, I think you know the it's it, you, you need the active and motivated you know parents to kind of be the force behind it. And it, it's complicated for us too because then your their school is also Rye, so yeah. we right now are dealing with large Mont. Town of Marinick, Village of Marinick, too much to add another municipality. Yeah, but uh, we'll, uh, like I said, we're, we're going to hopefully uh, in a couple of years from now have a much more improved situation for pedestrians, at least north and or you know, north of Halstead Avenue walking towards the schools. Okay. The uh, one that we should have covered, the West Street stop sign, you know, the corner of West Street and Park Avenue on the Marinick Harrison border. Yeah. Um, it memory serves me right from that. Like I think, well, well, for one, we had the police department. They put in um, a speed sign, which I actually spoke with the resident about, and they were happy to see that. Um, and then I think we asked for uh, a step up in enforcement of stopping at that intersection there. But I'm not sure what else. I mean, there was a general consensus that the stop signs will not make the cars uh, more likely to stop, as we've been saying for a long time. And and I know I used to live there, and there's only Maybe one street, Rose Avenue, they could put a stop sign there. And that would be like maybe one or two blocks further from the corner of West Street and Harrison. So it didn't seem like there was much of a spot to put it. And there's a, there's a sign for a slow curve and a 25 mile an hour sign. So I don't, you know, I'm going to make a motion to uh, reject the request. I'll put second a stop it. Sign there. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I'm sorry, which was the motion to reject the request for a stop sign? It's number 13, Lou, the West Street stop sign. Got it, got it. Hold on. I mean, agree. So, do we need to notify the person who brought this up to us by email that this is what happened? Yeah, I can reach out to him. He spoke to him once. 
Yeah, I, I've spoke to his son twice. I've and I met uh, the gentleman. I remember I spoke Mike to him. Yeah. yeah. And then the last item um, for the old business is the Mamarna Community Nursery School. And Dan, I remember we were talking about adding signage there, yeah. like high visibility signage. And and the uh, cross, what do you call that? Uh, the hatching. 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 Yeah. Um, was that ever, uh, okay, I'll, I'll talk with our traffic engineer on uh, the Can hatching. Make a formal recommendation. Yeah, I, I, I would prefer if you made a formal recommendation. And changing the color of the signs, was that in the Yeah, yeah. The high visibility, yeah. like green or. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion to. Um, install like the hatching as well as the high visibility signs on the street leading up to the school. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Maybe we can notify those two ladies. Yeah. From yeah. I'll reach out to them. I've seen them. I've seen them on right. baseball fields. They always right. <laughs> they know where you are. <laughs> yeah. They bumped into me like, oh what a small world. Like what's going on? <laughs> that catcher's mask. Yeah. I asked another question for you. Yes. Um, I saw in the minutes that the last meeting you talked about the no return sign on the Merrick Avenue. I know, I know one, one. But I didn't see that in your old business and it's still not there. Do you know what damn we were supposed to look into it? I think it said. Well, I uh what I said was I was gonna I recall that this had come up several years ago. Right. And was I was gonna look in the minutes and forward that to the commission. So I, I did forward that to the commission. Uh, what, what uh, I think it was maybe 2013, 2014, 2015, right. the village had put up, put up that no U-turn. The issue that arose is that for uh, individuals who lived on certain streets up on that section of, of the Heights, they, they had to come all the way down into the village to make a U-turn to go back up. Mamaroneck Avenue, and that's why it was rescinded. Can I suggest something? <laughs> I drive there 20 times a day. So it is very hard if you're coming up Mamaroneck Avenue to turn left onto Knollwood. If somebody's waiting to make a U turn at the cutout where you have to turn to Knollwood, you cannot see. I am surprised that I haven't gotten to an accident yet. But if the cars that want to make the U-turn would just pull up to the cutout where sound view is, they could see better and it wouldn't interfere with the people turning onto a note. Because there's two cutouts there. One to turn to sound view and the second one to turn to mobile. So you're so saying it's out. okay to make the U-turn? I think it would be okay to make the U-turn if the U-turn was made further up. There is two openings. The first opening, can you, can you put it on that? So you're saying move it to sound view. Yeah, yeah. It, that's, a, that's a block up. And that's, cl that's, um, yep. that's closer to the curve, right? Where they can see around the curve? Because the coming, like the cars that are coming up is kind of a hill. Yeah. So they would be closer to that and could see that better too. The reason this came up is that the person who complained about it a few months ago had what he described as a, a terrible near accident. It and scared, no, I can tell. And, and, and I that's what to prompted him to. Day, but right. I've never complained to you guys. But, no, but there used to be a sign. But what he said is the sign it's not down. was not down. Was, there was an accident. It was not right. Down. Never. Uh, but it was never put back up because right. we had the issue with the people who lived on, I think it was off of. Uh, I can't remember the, all the, the streets up there. The well, yeah, street. because you have those dead end side yeah. and people that live in the apartment building park across the street too. And yeah. They probably have to turn around. Yeah, that was the so the, which uh, is fine, but it's not. So I'm I'm sharing the screen so everyone can can see. Right. We have to. So this is the intersection with Soundview. Uh, definitely taken <laughs> literally last month because this is the moves all paper torn up. Um. So here's the no U-turn sign. Uh, so I think the no U-turn sign is going that the other direction. Bar is, there's an island. You can't see it in the picture. This island or? No, there, right there. That island. So right now, cars, can you back up a little? 
no back panel. Uh, so, uh, wait, he's, that's fine. Yeah, there you go. No. Is this good or? Well, if you're, it's better if you're on the other side. Of the yeah. <laughs> then you can see what I mean. So that's from here, so like where the camera's facing is where the car is waiting to make the U-turn or stop it. And so when you're coming up to try to make a left, the car, and I drive an SUV, whether it's a car or another SUV or a truck, you can't see. So it, you almost have to wait till the light turns red or keep inching up and chancing that nobody's coming. If the car, rather than stopping there, would pull up to after the island and make the U-turn there, it wouldn't interfere with the drivers that are trying to turn off the light. Oh, yeah, so I, I think I, let me see what we just timing change the lights to allow for the Well, no, I, I would say, and I know they just painted it, but it's there's the arrow to turn. If you make the arrow to go straight and then the arrow to turn, you know what I mean? No, I know what you, I know what you mean. I just don't know if they would need, like, you know, how you have. So I think what you're, you're kind of saying is. Because now that right there, it turns into three lanes. So there's a left turn lane there. The left turn lane starts before that line. So the cars are stopping like at that white line, waiting to make a U turn. So they're making the U turn here. Correct. You're suggesting they make it here, past past so the like, light. I thought maybe if you drew right now when they repaved, there's a left turn arrow painted on the ground. If the arrow went straight, showing you to go straight, and then a left turn arrow after that other island at Soundview. Um, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I do. I think I think the reason why it's probably here because that's where the traffic light is. So I think they want you to make the U-turn right. where the where the light is not. I'll try and do it. Like no, no, I I understand, but I think that really that that may be. Part of allowing a U-turn that has to be at a well, signalized. Well, there's also no U-turn coming up the hill, and yeah. lately everybody's in the U-turn. Oh, that's. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's really deep. Yeah. So Tina, do you own do you own one in the police department? Huh? You own, do you know anyone in the police department? No. <laughs> they don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we have consent. Like, this seems like I, it's in a warrant. Yeah, I, I I I don't know if I. I don't know if it's, if it's permissible to do that. That's that's my concern. Well, then I would definitely ask that you please look into putting a no U-turn sign there. I mean, I think people's convenience is not as important as people's safety. I mean, the, and then if you count how many cars turn left up that hill. Um, make the left turn center. Can you do it? Well, you'd have to. You you can make the left turn, then you'd be driving through a residential neighborhood to swing back around. So, can you do a count for like two or three weeks to do no, data on how many people are making those U turns? So so it could be a base for for that change. Um, I, I can ask the county if they have that because they might have done that as part of the uh, uh, design work for the uh, repaving project they just did. I, I can. I, I know a couple people at the county DPW. Let's do that. We'll keep it. We'll make sure it's on the agenda, whether it's new or old next time. We'll discuss it further, but I want to get to the folks here as well. I'm sorry. No, don't. there's no need to be sorry. They're all. Okay, so that covers all the old business. I think we made a lot of progress. Oh, the Mamaroneck Avenue at I-95 ramp? With the yeah. crossing guard, I thought, we, I, th I thought we removed that. That it's not within our control, that it's stated. Well, I'll make a right formal there. motion just yeah. so it's on the record to remove it. Okay. I thought Ryan wanted to keep it on. Sorry, Ryan. I think you spoke about item number 14. You want to come up with one, you want to come up with some solutions, even though we couldn't do the crossing guard. Yeah, I think we talked about um, the rumble strips. Uh, right. What the possibilities would be to slow down uh, traffic exiting. I, I know that requires you know outreach to you know, state entities, the through, throughway folks. Um, well, yeah, but I think just re removing it altogether. 
uh, or is again, um, uh, an, uh, an issue facing, you know, kids walking to school. And you know, I think it's come up, uh, I, I don't know what the solution is um, beyond the, the idea of rumble strips or, or something to get folks, you know, when they're exiting the ramp to stop at the stop sign and not overshoot the stop sign and put themselves in the middle of the, uh, the sidewalk, right? Where the sidewalk crosses um, over the I-95 exit. I thought the only option we talked about was a crossing guard and we, we discounted that. You can yeah, the crossing guard was discounted guard. because it was dangerous for the crossing guard, especially with construction. But I do recall that we wanted to keep that on the list to keep on the old business to keep looking into different ideas, like Several. like what Brian said. I mean, somebody I, I was supposed to reach it. out to yeah. the throughway department to find out what we can do because we don't own that. Yeah. Well, what, what I may a suggestion, I can. Uh, well, do you want me to? Um, you know, the, uh, I can prepare a draft letter of. Uh, you want to look at it, maybe uh, come from the chair of the committee commission, say, you know, are there things you can do to address or uh, speed of uh, vehicles coming off of I-95 at this intersection, at this uh, uh, off ramp? I can, I can assure you that at least one member of the board of trustees is interested in some work on this because it's, it, I, I think it's very serious. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a I, I, I find it alarming every time I see. So do you want to? I can, both sides of ninety five on both exits. You know? I, I I can prepare like a draft letter if you want to take a look at it and then you have it sent from the commission. Yeah, I would prefer that than just the ban thing because I know like there's challenges between the the number of people, but like yeah, it's really dangerous even if it's a, you know, there's not a ton of people that use it or like you know don't have a definitive solution. I mean, it's dangerous for the crossing guard. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> that's a scary thought. It's even dangerous for the driver, the current situation. Yeah. Very strange. Uh, uh, right now, there's some construction there, so it's even. But yeah, let's keep it on. Yeah, it's, not, it's not apparent what the, what the solution is, but uh, I think we've got to put some brain thought, some thoughts about it. That might be it. Okay. New business. Yeah, new business. All right, so I want, rather than go into order, I want to uh, hear from the folks in the room so that they can get on with uh, their lives and back to their families. So uh, we'll start from uh, we'll, you right here, sir, if you want to come up. My name is Jimmy Abadi. I live at 170 Washington Street and uh, Apes Park parking. I'd like to speak about that. <clears throat> For There's many reasons why I believe that we should take the parking away from the front of the park. Um, none of the parks have cars in front of them. Uh, Columbus Park, diagonally they park in front, but it's open, wide open. Um, Genozio Park, all, all, all the parks, there's no parking in front of them. Um, this, this street is really bad. I, I call it, it was a bodega, I call it Gerardas. It used to be Gerardas and Papa's Market. They park trailers there at least three or four times a day, deliveries. Um, you can't get by, you can't make the turn to go past the park. It's really dangerous in the daytime. Uh, you got gardeners picking up uh, day laborers there. Um, everybody parks their car in front of the park. And you can't make that turn. That's just one of the reasons. Are you talking about Madison or? It's White Madison and, and uh, Old White Plains Road. The other, the other reason is uh, Pape's Park is a known trouble spot, okay? A lot of issues there. You can't see into the park. I think it would be uh, beneficial also for the police officers to be able to have access to see what's going on in the park at all times. It's blocked with cars. So basically whatever's going on in there is covered. Um, but that's not the only reason. You know, it's, it's a dangerous spot. People park there all day. If you ever come down there in the daytime, you cannot make the turn. It's, it's loaded with traffic. So what happens is a tractor trailer will pull in front of uh, the supermarket across the street, so cars have to go around. Now they're they're going head on, and there's the park. They're parked in front of the park, so you can't make the turn there. Garden and trucks are parked there. I mean, my suggestion would be that they make they take that out, no parking, and make it a delivery only uh, section. That these trucks that deliver to these stores can pull there when they make their delivery, and then they're gone. 
nobody should be parked there all day long, um, all night long. Um, it's definitely a hazard. It's not a good park. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. They were supposed to have the summer program for the kids, the reading program, and uh, they, they took it out because they had an issue. Um, they were intimidated um, also. And they took the whole bookcase out. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Um, that was for the kids. So, you know, anything that's going on, unfortunately, in this park needs to be wide open. Um, nobody can see in the park. And uh, at the same time, it's traffic wise. Traffic wise is dangerous. Right? So right where the white, the white cars, can I? Yeah, go, go for it. Right where that Jeep is, right there. Mm -hmm. That whole space and right here in this corner. You, in the daytime, you can't even get in there. It's loaded with trucks. Cars stay there all day. And also it blocks in the park. So you can't see into the park. Um, I'm not a police officer, but I know that security wise, the stuff that goes on there um, would be better if it was wide open. You know, we live in the neighborhood quality of life. Uh, it should be wide open. It shouldn't be, it's a park. It should be open so you can see into the park and know what's going on at all times. All the parks are open. Right. So, you know, so that shouldn't be uh, the one that's blocked, especially what's going on there. I don't know if you guys want to do any research on it, but, you know, as a, as a taxpayer, it's, it's a bad situation there. And uh, right, like right there is clear on there, but all day long there's, there's traffic there. So then what happens over here on this side, there's a tractor trailer and they're making, they're trying to make deliveries. If you can go a little, can you go a little full? Okay, so right here, tractor trailer parks make deliveries. They're there for an hour or so. They make deliveries to both store. They come at least three times a day. You got the, the liquor deliveries, the food deliveries. And then, so people have to go around them. There's nowhere to go. So, I mean, my suggestion, would be that they take those cars out of there because they shouldn't be blocking, looking into the park anyway. It's supposed to be open. And at the same time, it'll be safer for, for pedestrians to walk, for uh, traffic to, to flow, and for officers to be able to do their job correctly and see what's going on. Thank you. How many parking spots are we looking at? Two or more? Well, you're cars? looking at, I mean, on the corner, you're, and you're, and I hate them, you're looking at, some of these cars stay there forever. They don't right. even move. Because we have residential parking down there, but not in that area. So some of these cars are parked there for weeks and they don't even move. So it, it, I, I'm going to speak, but I am not going to speak as a resident when, when James is finished. I'm going to speak as a resident, not as traffic commissioner. Okay. So written, my guess is by uh, uh, five vehicles to park in front of the park. Well, yeah, I mean, this is, here's this truck. That's kind of the edge of the park. Two, three, four, and maybe I can have. But here, here's the park. Area where, park. where the benches yeah. are, that's the park. The park is not the, is not the grass? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the grass is too. I mean, you can't listen. We're not trying to take, you can't take everybody's park away, but you can take it away blocking in front of the, the store and then on the side right here. All those cars right there, you can't even make that turn in the daytime. If you come down at any time during the day, it's, it's crazy. And once a, once a delivery comes, there's no way to get around it anyway. So, I mean, th these cars, like right there, this, this shouldn't be. None of those so cars. What, like what, kind of in, what kind of impact is that going to have on Los Primos um, if, if they're cus where their customer is going to park? Half of, those, if, uh, half of those cars are not even going into the store. They park their cars. They're there all day and all night. Um, also, that park, there's a lot of stuff happening there. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. Um, you can foil it. There's plenty of negativity going on. And you can't see into the park. Those cars are parked all day. And, and like I said before, you, it's, it's a park. None of the parks should be blocked. Yeah. They're not supposed to be. Thank you. Well, thank you, James. Hey, Laura. I'm going to jump in and I know Mr. O'Connor had sent an email and Ms. Maresca as well, but I'm going to speak as a resident of flats and the situation at hand. We have a, a many components and different moving parts occurring, but the bottom line is the safety and the overcrowding of parking in the Washingtonville area. 
Our streets have become unpassable. Cars are parked corner to corner. There is exactly 158 spots available in the Washingtonville area, and we over exceed that without, without account. When they did the residential parking and it was passed, streets were forgotten, namely um, this one particular street of Madison between Old White Plains Road and going into Grant Street and then Old, Old White Plains Road itself and portions of New Street, Gertrude, all of which should be circumvented into this situation. Uh, over parking pass, passes have been issued. Uh, they're not enforced, they are expired. But the bottom line is we're over parking. We had a flood that devastated us. We had vehicles that we, had, we couldn't account for um, that one area of the street is utilized. And if you go back to it and I could show you a van and, I, and I, I'm not going to give names, but if you go back to the street, this one particular van comes from either Ohio or Florida on a, a you gotta go back a couple of frames. It's a, it's a champagne van. It was a couple of frames back with a white top and they're right there, see it? And it'll stay there for weeks on end because you can park there in front of our park and you know it would open its doors and it holds court and it lives there for a couple of weeks out of the month. And residential parking isn't enforced there because it is an influx. And that's happening in front of our, our parks in Washingtonville. And in fact, this is the only park in Washingtonville that allows corner to corner parking in the village. Yeah. In its entirety. So in, in, in retrospect, to make sure that it's equitable, safe, environmentally safe, we do need to remove that parking. To accommodate Los Primos, you could, you could put a, a five-minute wait time. They're running in, getting something to drink, and running out. But the issue is they're double parking, and it's all day long. And I hate to say this, but it's enforcement. The streets are too small. It's too dangerous. And the speed in which people are driving back and forth, like looking at this right now, it looks like utopia to me without the cars parked there. Because if you see it on a real day, it's, it's dangerous in all aspects. The current and undercurrent of that park was a direct effect on my personal safety. I was cleaning the park with my neighbors and friends and family and the CRC and the Housing Alliance. And I was abused in the park and I was told to get out of the park. And I'm not gonna go into the verbiage that was used, but I was threatened in my own park to get out of it because the park patrons feel as if they own that piece of land. And they are flanked by cars day and night, and it's such an unsafe environment that our buildings and grounds have had to be escorted in their DPW to empty the garbage on a six week stint by our police department. Most currently, they our police have to oversee the construction of what would have been a wonderful project in that park and change it around, and they were chased away by the park patrons. And now they've moved their books for students and children for summer reading somewhere else. So it's a safety issue and it's, it's now morphing into the parking situation It's safe streets. You can go to New Street, there are cars parked on the corner of New Street. On Gertrude, there's a white van that's been left there for probably a year and a half and it hasn't moved and cars are parked corner to corner. They're parked in St. Vito's parking lot. You can go and zoom in there. There are so many numerous parking spots that are just being hoodwinked <coughs> and taken upon themselves as residents to park there. And I understand parking situation is, is grave, but to sacrifice safety and uh, accountability and organization in a flood zone escapes me. May I, um, may I uh, jump in? I, yeah, Dan, I think, I think we could take this directly to the board uh, and put it on a, a, a work session uh, agenda. And we can ask the, the, um, 
the Traffic Commission to weigh in on the traffic acts aspect of it, and then perhaps uh, make a request to, uh, we have a parks committee, right? Trustee. I should know that. <laughs> if I were a trustee, I would know that. Um, uh, as parks com uh, commission also to, to take a look at it and, and what they think of the recommendation about that. Uh, uh, and, uh, I already sent an email to you. And, and, and whatever other uh, commis uh, commissions we have, and then take it directly to the board and uh, and uh, see about just losing the parking at, at that park because I have to tell you when I when I was walking that area you know talking to people uh, um, uh, and I came upon I said oh this is Pape's Park it, it doesn't read as a park because of exactly what you're describing that it's that it's kind of walled off and um, and I didn't even realize the grass was part of the park so uh, I think uh, uh, you know we we probably have an obligation to open it up. And, and, and tend to it. And, uh, and uh, if we lose some parking spaces, we lose some parking spaces. And, uh, and uh, that would be that. I don't think you, you need to sell it any further um, and, and unless you wanna just, for the, for the, for the traffic uh, uh, aspect alone, I think I've already stayed in your lane, um, uh, make a rec recommendation. And then, we, uh, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put it, on, uh, I normally call Dan when we put something on the, on the work, work agenda, we'll put it on the work agenda. And then, uh, and then elicit uh, additional comments. Is that is that proper? Would that work? Why? Well, whatever the board wants to do, I, it's as, as long as it's not uh, illegal, or unethical, or immoral. Well, we're, we're good. So, so let's. You know, so, we, <laughs> so rather than because I don't, I think some of these issues are, are beyond the purview of the of the of the the, the, the traffic commission. Absolutely. And and, and yeah, I hear I the other things you're saying, but, but I, we we could look to that, and we, we you know we, we could uh, ask the police, uh, or, but it, it seems like a no brainer to me. Yeah, the police department's not against taking more than parking spots there. And actually, if you look at, you know, 80 cases in the park, people that need assistance, there's no cars parked there. We can park the ambulance right there where it wouldn't be a problem okay. to get to those people. Um, and we have had people that are sick in the park, in all our parks, not just the All right, so if we just get it on, we'll just, if we put it on in two weeks and we'll, we'll get it on, uh, get it on and take care of it. From a parking management perspective, I, I don't worry about, you know, losing you know four or five spaces. I lose. A, I worry about losing forty spaces. Yeah. Right. And 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 it, it, the the reality of it. When I heard about it, heard about it, heard. About it. When I saw it, I'm like, whoa! This is this is it doesn't even read as a park. I thought it was just like it's it, 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 it's it a is a park. it's a it's a neighborhood park. It's yeah. a city park. Yeah, it's but 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 it's it's a neighborhood park. You, you know, people yeah. frequent in the park are not driving to it. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're walking to the park. It's, it's not it's not like Harbor Island Park yeah. or you know, so like. Uh, Florence or Columbus, those are, you know, much larger. Yeah. Um, I don't think we need to belabor this. I think we can put it, we'll put it right on a work set, uh, agenda. Get a get a recommendation if you if you folks are are, are willing to make a recommendation. It's made about what, whatever you think, and we'll just uh, we'll just go with it. Yeah, I think. Can you guys just vote on that? Also, I mean, to, you have to vote on it. I think Ms. Maresca wanted to say something. Oh yeah, yeah. The, uh, they would need to vote to make the recommendation. I don't. We don't. I don't need anything. But to, I, I could put it on the. Uh, on the work session agenda on my, on my own authority, and um, uh, and um, uh, if if the if if my colleagues on the uh, on, on the uh, on the board of the work session agree, we can then then take care of it in a, in a regular meeting two weeks from then. In terms of what safety and in, in terms of in terms of just saying we we're moving the parking at Pape's Park, we can do that. And to well, avoid, it's, 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 well, it's, it's, it's all safety, but it's also the none of the parks should be. But I, I get you. I get, it. but this, but this commission deals with traffic, so right. so we 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 we'll get their take on it. The rest of it, I think everybody's every everybody's up to speed. But we can we, we can we can ask for recommendations. In, 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 including safety, when you see Los Primos, that used to be a no parking mm -hmm. many moons ago not to hurt the business owner, how can it, there should be no parking in front of this store. And for the reason being, the streets are double parked and you, it's impassable. But to not hurt the business owner, what signage could we incorporate to allow somebody to stop and pick up their lunch and go without parking or, or leaving their vehicle there just for the, just for the simple fact that it's dangerous. Double parking, tractor trailers, people are making deliveries. You have numerous gardeners double parked. It's it's impassable. So I, 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 
think there, there are two easier ones I think to take care of it. But, you know, if you talk about a loading zone, um, I mean, that, that's, that's going to take a lot of space for a loading zone. Um, you know, that, that for if you're talking about a, you know, a, a tractor trailer making deliveries. No, I'm talking about patrons being able to pull over to patronize the bodega because I'm talking about removing the spots in front of the bodega as permanent spots and allowing somebody to stop to go into the bodega for the fact that when cars are parked there, they're left there. Yeah, and right. then you're unable to pass because people double park in front of those vehicles. And that's a, a very short term, a short time limit. The person that owns the bodega parks there all day yes. and takes the parking space in front and blocks so, the park. So um, I wouldn't even worry about that. No, but, you know, let's, let's say okay. Yeah, you, you, you could you could request a fifteen or thirty minute uh, you know time limit. Ultimately, that but it's again it's an enforcement issue, and um, you know being able to enforce a fifteen minute time limit is exceedingly difficult. I wouldn't even put. I honestly, I wouldn't even put it up there because they'll they'll figure out a way to get in there. Because once you put that up, well, I just pulled up. You know, it's like. Nobody's going to enforce it that way. It's difficult. Just you let, them, let them figure out how to park. I was just saying, a, a, a short term, I, you know, 15, like, again, short term time limits are notoriously difficult to enforce because you have to have someone literally standing there for that amount of time focused on nothing else. And that's so really the base of this is to remove parking for safety for the perimeter of Pig Park. So that's in front of the park road, Old yeah. Way Plains Road. Think and on to Madison. Yep. So like, I, 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 just, I just want to clarify something. I mean, I, I, I see it and I know the area that um, I, have, I can't say I visited the park, but I know old what Plains Road in that intersection. Um, I guess my thing is the, 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 the resident is proposing removing cars that are blocking the entrance to the park and the vantage point that we have up right now clearly shows that the entrance to the park is on Madison, um and not on old old white plains road uh there's a couple maybe that a statement could be made um, where that black car and that white suv and then it goes into the the van and then the the i think removing a couple of those spots but to remove parking in front of a of a of a of a vibrant business, um, uh, I think is 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 a little bit of a mistake here. I mean, I think clearly where that truck is parked needs to be removed. That van has been parked for a period of time that needs to be removed. That park needs to be opened up in Madison. But old white plains, we're, we're taking away spots from from uh, a business, aren't we? Actually, actually, the entrance to the Papes Park, Ryan, is yep. on Old White Plains Road. So when you walk go, into Papes Park, entrance? you yeah. walk into that park, and that sign is on the ground, welcome to Papes Park. So when you see these two, these two spots right here, you would have no parking from the corner of Los Primos to the corner because that's the perimeter of the park. You would have no parking there and around the bend. So where's the sign that says welcome to Page Park? It's on the floor. It's on a, it's on a, and. No, but, the, but there's two no parking the signs. Right. Because they were, they were, um, they're cutting up the sewer. Yeah. So they're parking. It's temporary. It's temporary signs. So basically that no temporary signs would be no parking because you're, that's the perimeter of the park right there. See it? From the corner of the house to the sidewalk, that piece of land, 25 feet, was yeah. donated from what was and, once called Gerondas. And so, I, I, I want to be clear, I, I, I agree with that. What I'm talking about is um, going back all the way to the, to I believe it's the driveway of Los Primos. Brian, you, you kind of mentioned thinking about on the other side of this tree well. Yeah. I mean, I think I think you you remove the parking, and so yeah, anything there. I think there's two parking spaces behind that white or a park. Yeah, another parking space. So, so why can't we leave uh, two painted parking spots or a parking spot? Because I agree with the enforcement of 15 minutes. That's difficult. 
but to remove all parking in front of a of a business, I mean, I. I don't think we're we're not suggesting it. Can I say that? First, we we're not asking to remove all the parking. Right. Just so you know, right? Yeah. This is in front of the store. That's fine. This is it's at the store. Where it starts is right here at the tree. At the end of that building. Yeah, at the this corner and the next corner. That is the park. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. That, completely that, agree with that. I completely agree with that. Yeah. We can't take all the. We're not no. looking to take so, all the parking. That's why I say I think you, I think what Brian was mentioning is on the other side. Keep the parking on the other side of the tree well. Yeah, no, it's at the end of the building where the park starts. But does, do you see where the tree well is? Is that? Yes. Cool? Yeah. Right. The, the idea is you don't want the, the block the park. Exhaust yeah. going into the park, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so that's 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 like cherry on the ice. That's the number one thing that you don't want to have in the park. That's what you want to remove, right? Yep. The other thing too is that you got the kids running from the park in between the park cars. You got to remove that. That, that's a hazard, that's a risk, right? On top of that, you have to go and zone everything. So it's not, hey, let's just move the park, parking around Peach Park because the environmental body of life risk, right? You also need to go back and look at that whole zoning, as I mentioned earlier, or I sent an email to the board yesterday about this whole situation about the parking there. You got commercial parking on Madison for days. You got cars acting, Park there for days, weeks, and months. They act as if it's their own private parking area. Then you got the commuters there parking there all day long, circumventing the parking lot, taking the Metro North end to come back to the garden and go home. So it's a loophole, right? So when you're looking at this, it's two phases it's the parking perimeter around Papes, plus the zoning from Old White Plains Road to Grand Street. That's got to be residential parking because of the nonsense that goes on now. That's got to be looked at and fixed. And that will not impact any of your businesses with this or O5. This residential parking is two hour increments. Personally, I put the, the parking because like, I, I think in fact, like reducing parking, open up a pedestrian area benefits businesses, at least in New York City, it's been proven to, to, to do that. And that parking, people aren't even going into the store. I mean, it's hard to quantify that. All the points you brought up, quality of life, safety, flooding. I would challenge the parks and recs committee to make the park bigger. We remove the parking, extend the park out into the street. It's not possible. Yeah, it the is. You get rid narrow. of it. You can move out the side. My point is, you can do something transformational with that area rather than just remove the parking spots. I think is the first step. We remove the parking spots and open it up. It, it could become a, a really nice location with with right. It new doesn't equipment. have to be all concrete. No, it could be new equipment, swings, plants, shrubbery, flowers. Right. Oh, I, I, but I think. The, you're trying to kind of make this into two yeah. discrete issues. One is the park, and then is I think the larger issue, which Mr. O'Connor is mentioning. Um, you know, so if that's the if you want to, uh, is, is that the way you want to kind of approach it? Or yeah, I think okay. we start with I make a motion to remove the parking from really. I mean, and we could go out and measure, but it's basically that tree oh, down. A nice tongue twister, the perimeter of Pape's Park. Yeah, yeah. perimeter of Pape's Park. Yeah. Away Plains Road onto Madison Street. Yes, sir. Right. So I have a question. So what I understood your email was your concern about um, parking spaces and that there weren't enough parking spaces. Is that correct? Correct. It, it In was the area? kind of twofold, right? So, okay, so, so let me just right. make my question and then you can, you can answer. Okay. So it sounds like you're now looking to remove parking spaces when on the one hand, you're saying there aren't enough parking spaces and I'm trying to understand the seeming contradiction in removing parking spaces when there aren't enough. So can you help me out here? Right, so like I said, it's twofold, right? You wanna remove the parking spaces around Peeps Park because of the environmental issues, right? That's the first aspect. The other aspect is the zoning for residential. All right, so now you have commercial, you have out-of-state uh, cars that park there all day long, and now you've got uh, commuters that park there all day long. They don't have to have shown the residential tags that they park there. So what you're doing is you're displacing all the people that live on that street to park elsewhere, like on Washington Street, Grand Street, Mass Street. So what you're doing is that since you're not um, managing 
that street area through uh, residential zoning, it moving that issue with the parking to other side streets, which is causing issues in my neighborhood. Okay, so let me let me ask this question. So removing, so you're saying that there are people that um, take advantage of those parking spaces. They don't move, their cars stay there. Absolutely. So my question is, if we remove those parking spaces of those cars, going to find some other place to permanently park and create a problem someplace else. Um, what I'm asking is, are we moving are, are we moving that problem just to another street or another location? That's my question. Can I answer? I, I think it's two separate issues. Mm -hmm. So I think that you should look at it separately because it's getting confused. But I think what my in-laws live over there, and I think what Tim's referring to is, and I I don't know how long you've all been here, but I don't know, maybe four years ago, they required that the residents buy parking permits. You have to go to Village Hall, show proof that you live on that street in order to be allowed to park on that street. But where he's talking about and some of the other roads that, left out. that Laura mentioned don't require you so to get the permit. Specifically about those areas around the yes, park? Yes, specifically. Get, well, not, no, 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 but that street. But he doesn't mean that removing, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to put words in your mouth. He doesn't mean that removing those spots is going to affect the, re the residents because the residents can't park there now anyway. Oh, okay. And it's not residents parking because there? Because they don't yeah. have to get those tickets. So on the, issue number one is to remove the parking. Issue number two, which should be totally separate, is to revise the code or whatever it's called and add that those residents, those streets will require parking tags in order to be allowed to park it. So, so, so I'm sorry, so right. let me just let me yeah. make sure I understood. So the people that we're talking about that are um, dominating those places right there. If we remove, so they won't have another place to go. That was but my question. They, from, they will not be able to park. Well, but they're coming else. from, say, Scarsdale to use our train station, parking there for free, walking to the train, because I've seen people walk to the train. So it's not that you, you're hurting village residents. You know what I'm saying? And so I sent you guys an email from the Parks and Recs Commission on the chairperson, because it was discussed at our last meeting. An issue was brought to us, so we decided that we should look at enforcement of things in all the parks. And we noticed that this was the only park that you were allowed to park at the entrance to. And we thought it was dangerous for a num numerous reasons. Um, the reason I tried to rush it was because we thought the kids were having the books here. So I was worried, and everybody else was worried on the committee that. These, there was going to be an influx of kids to this location and it would become even more unsafe. So we wanted to try to make everything uniform throughout all the village parks. And this was the only um, parking issue that was not uniform. So it would make all the parks the same where you cannot park at the entrance to any park in the village. And you mentioned the police and the fire, even the fire. I mean, I don't know if the fire chief wants to speak. Like, if there's ever an emergency, and those are these are all buildings. If God forbid there was a fire, or somebody on the third floor needed an ambulance, you need quick response time, and you can't get through. Has your so, has your committee um, sent a recommendation to the board? I sent. Well, I was told that it had to go to the traffic commission, and the traffic commission had to bring it to the board. But I, I can, I guess I can, can forward the email that I sent. No, it's good. And I, I'd like to piggyback off Tina Moresca. The residential parking dates back to 2013. There were streets that were erroneously left off. There were several occasions during the course of the years that they wanted to reincorporate Madison Street and Old White Plains Road and bring it through Gertrude, and it fell to the wayside. And you know, it's a disservice to the residents of Washingtonville because they're displaced. Mr. O'Connor has to pay to go and park at the train station. 
and other people are parking for free. And it's a disservice because again, our neighborhood is not cookie cutter. It's not something you could conclusively say, well, where is everyone else gonna go? There's only a certain amount of spots, period, at the end. And the parking passes over the years were given out in overabundance instead of pulling it back and figuring out a mathematical equation to make it doable. There'll always be overflow, but right now you have a situation where you have over parking, over issuing, and, and safety concerns right, no, on top of catastrophic flooding that move vehicles down the road as if it was boulders flying through the air, as I witnessed firsthand. I, I know, I think the commission wants to probably end the meeting by 9 p.m. or kind of running up against it, but it's- We is, have to marry down the street. So, uh, but, so as, as Laura mentioned, the, um, so this was, uh, was like published 2015. I, I can't remember the exact date, but, uh, in order to create the residential parking system, the village required a special act of the New York State Legislature. Uh, it's, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but that was that was granted. Uh, the um, the system identified specific streets on which we could issue parking permits for on street parking. Uh, I don't know if there's I think there's a sunset clause in here. I don't see it listed. Um, but uh, at some point, uh, if we do need to go back and get it reauthorized, uh, that would probably we'd, we would work with um, Assemblyman Otis and State Senator Mayor to get it uh, reauthorized. If that's coming up soon, uh, you know that may be an opportune time to uh, uh, you know look at some of those additional streets. Uh, if it was adding one or two streets and we're only one year <laughs> into the legislation being in effect. Uh, the state legislature might not be as willing to add one street as opposed to reauthorizing the entire system with new streets. <laughs> so I, I can get you information on where we stand with the, uh, if, uh, where the, what the sunset clause is on this, because at some point we will need to go back, we will likely need to go back to New York State to get this reauthorized. And then revisit it because it's changed that's, that's, community wise. It's, it's a, new, a, a new issue that's not on you. That's, um, uh, uh, we could possibly get to, to get, get, get you guys to take a position on the removal of parking from Paper Park and send that to the board. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Lou. And then because there are valid concerns, but like it, it warrants a deeper conversation. Maybe he's at the next meeting. And that's a whole can of worms. Yeah. It's a whole different it's can of worms. Big, yeah. Big concerns, a valid concern for sure. So um, I'm going to make a motion to remove the parking from that tree, basically the perimeter of the park. Right? Second. How many Plus the coasters? cars going on Madison, right? Yeah. About like the, cars. It's like an L. So how many White parking roads road to Madison? Madison. Yeah, it's like four to six or five. Probably. Uh -huh. It's about um, six or seven. Yeah. Well, so it looked like it was four that could. Seven, but you're counting two corners that you're not supposed to be parking on anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. It did look like it was. Four or five spaces on the Madison side, and like two, two on spaces yeah. on the Old White Lanes Road side. Yeah. And, and that uh, that'll be before us in two weeks. We just have to vote first. I made the motion. <laughs> Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two weeks from now, then. Do we need consensus for it to move forward? Because Robert, you, you didn't vote. I just voted. You yeah. voted I? I just raised my Oh, okay. Sorry. It looks like it's even less because you can't park from a big section of it right here. It looks like five. Yeah, you're not five supposed spots. to park there, but that's that's the issue. Like, we'll do anyway. And then the broader parking within the Washington bill, like we'll definitely keep this on the agenda. And like it's gonna warrant uh, you know, work with potentially the legislature. It's just a bigger issue but we're not going to lose sight of it so it says just so it says repeal date january 1st 2025 uh, we'll probably be talking about this soon because it's a laborious process to get uh, special acts now it's now it's evolved it's changed i will i just we'll probably have to start talking about it with assembly office within the next six months i think 
Okay. Thank you both. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Oh, Hopefully you learned something new. Yeah, very high opening. Okay. Yeah, two minutes. I don't know. We're just okay. kidding, right? <laughs> My name is yeah. Ann Good. I'm here as a representative of the executive oh, board of the Maranek Avenue School. Um, I very much appreciate the thoughtfulness and the in-depth discussion you give to each problem that has come before you. And I come with the biggest one of all, the Maranek Avenue. 25,000 cars a day by your own estimate. In 2017, more today, uh, the largest elementary school in the school district in both towns, or both villages, most of the students walk to school far more than any other in our area, um, both because of the walkability of the village and because of the demographics of the school. They're walk to school kids. And six of the most problematic at least intersections for traffic and pedestrian traffic flow and pedestrians are on the Marin Avenue. And we've done nothing. Like I appreciate very much. And I, I the creativity that went into solving uh prospect of Benamore. The forward look thinking that's gonna have to look at Calston. But right now, there is nothing happening on the Marin Avenue. And the improve the, the changes that are being made are for the worse. The off-center cut at North Shore Farms, that's not directly on an intersection, but a skew has created a pedestrian hazard and a traffic flow problem. So what I'm coming to you to ask for is help on two things. Um, there's others on Zoom, because um, we had, we thought we were gonna be at the June meeting. Help with the pedestrian issues on some key intersections. Manaranek and Old White Plains Road, the five points irregular, flashing red light stop, which is problematic, non-conforming, and I'd say probably one of the easiest things to fix. Mamaronek, the intersections of Mamaronek, Point, Depot Plaza, Ballstead, Mount Pleasant, and then the Mount Pleasant turning lane. There is no pedestrian signage. A child doesn't know whether to walk or not walk. The most basic safety principles are not there. Every other major intersection around a school, there's a barn stop where pedestrians have a, a signal where there's an all way pedestrian cross. That is an intersection that calls for it, that six, at least lanes of traffic in different directions. We don't have that. There is never a time when it's safe to cross as a pedestrian. You just gotta hope for the best. And that's the main route to school. Um, the triangle of Mamaritic Avenue and Old White Plains Road across from Juarez and Swim Tank. I bet you not, there couldn't be consensus here on what the traffic rule is at that stop. Like, <laughs> who's got the yield? Who stops? Like, who? I don't know that the police know that. And we expect elementary school kids to navigate that. I think it's ridiculous. And we're not taking any attention. Um, additionally, we're approving street cuts or keeping grandfathered street cuts with no difference in signage, the Dippin' Car Wash, North Shore Farms, all have really busy driveways that cut across sidewalks with no visual differentiation, no sign of the pedestrian. And in some cases at the new North Shore, there's a turning green that gives the driver every indication that they're permitted to like exit. And traffic, pedestrian yeah. traffic does not stop. We didn't know. We can do better and we can use like some of the creative solutions that you guys have used in other places. It seems a big problem and it is a big problem and we can change it. The other thing that I think is a separate issue is the traffic flow issues on the Maranek Avenue, particularly during the morning drive to school, drive to the highways time are very, very frustrating for drivers of all kinds that are coming through and out of our towns. And it leads to some really bad behavior. And part of what's so frustrating is that between the train, not even the train station, but between the trains, between the exits for 95 and Waverly, there are six left turns across traffic that are not arrows. 
There's a left turn permitted without an arrow at Hillside. There's a left turn for, for no real reason. There's a left turn permitted at Nostrand. There's a left turn at North Shore Farms. There's a left turn into Speedway. There's a left turn into Jefferson, all from the lane going towards Mamaron and Gavinum, a left turn into Sheldrake Place. What that effectively does is make one of the two lanes of traffic a left turn lane without a signal. So it forces traffic into one lane, which is frustrating considering the volume of cars that come through. And it brings out aggressive driving in the area that's a school zone. I don't know. We, we need help with that. And I know I, you can't come to you asking for enforcement. That's somebody else we go to. I'm not sure how Rynex has arranged that on their post, post road school that there's a cop there's like no, actively. No like that. Okay. Do we need help figuring out how to redesign this? All these unsignaled left turns on both sides, because it goes the other way too. It's all the traffic from the French American school that's coming from the Boston Post Road direction has to make a left onto Elliott across traffic, unsignaled. Uh, excuse me, has to make a left onto New. All the MAS traffic coming from that direction has to make a left onto Elliott. And with the closure of the Waverly Bridge, everybody's coming from the Marinette. Yeah. There's no way to cut across the back one. So how would we go about making some positive changes that would be good for the school, good for the residents, good for everybody. Wow. So I, I, I know that the, um, the commission did a walking assessment study uh, several years ago. Uh, we actually have uh, designed a uh, pedestrian improvement project in and around the school. At, Can I, so as part of that, as part of that walking assessment, at that time, we were, the, that was an afterthought. It was originally like a, a RINAC focusing up for good reason, they have issues too. Um, and so it was limited to these one block radius around the school. So it was not looking at any of the entrance routes into school. It was only looking at Elliot, Gertrude, and Ralph, and okay. not Mary. And I, what I was going to say is, um, I, I'm more than happy to, you know, sit with, with people, go over the plan that was designed. Uh, we have received grant funding for, I would say the first three phases of this project. Uh, it was basically the, the cost of the project is around $2 million. Uh, we received three grants from uh, Westchester County under the Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, when the program up, opens up again uh, in a couple of years, we're gonna apply for the next, the final phases of the project. Um, and I said, I'm more happy to go over what, what the approach was, what the design was. Um, I know that the police department uh, met with our traffic engineer about specifically about New Street and some of the activity at the French American School. Uh, there are gonna be some <clears throat> items uh, that we're gonna ask the board, well, I'm gonna ask the board, I'm not a member of the commission. Uh, I'm gonna ask the board to consider at their work session about uh, uh, redirecting traffic uh there are uh and work with the uh, so was that work session uh the work session uh the board of trustees has uh, uh work sessions the next scheduled work session is is july 25th uh yeah it's gonna be several items on there uh following that, up from this it's supposed to be a truncated one, right? it's getting bigger <laughs> uh, i will i i will put on the work session priority okay right. uh I, I cannot force the board of trustees to uh, <laughs> consider the items. I'm, okay. I'm, a, I'm yet, uh, only a humble I civil servant. Yeah. Um, so, the, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, um, you said you were gonna make some presentations on consider previewing them here. Okay. Uh, I, I'm more than happy to go over, uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not prepared to do that right now. I'm, I don't have everything here with me. I'm more than happy here, to do that. Like, you know, what, what areas will we do? Uh, with the, uh, oh, I, I think it was one of them was New Street, specifically the French American school traffic. The existing, so what, we're, what I'm asking for is more than just the one block around the school, because the kids have to get to those blocks. Once they are adjacent to the schoolyard, they're fine. I think, I think I understand what, yeah. what, what is being said, because it's, I think what we've been talking about partially this evening in regard to Washingtonville. Streets are became, have become uh, crossovers and through streets and bypasses that were not 
created for that. So we have to bring this radius out and, and encompass it into the whole area to help support. I mean, the White Plains, the corner of White Plains Road when you're coming off of Maranek Avenue, there's a crossing guard right across the way. And when you make your right hand turn, there's parking grid lines that haven't been repainted probably, I don't know, since I was 24. And cars oh, are parked right on, cars are, then. no, no, when you pull up, cars are parked right on the corner there, running in and out of the bakery, you have, you have a crossing guard trying to cross children, cars are parked here, double parked, you can't make the turn around, you have two cars coming both directions, and then you have kids trying to cross. And, and, and but there are, there are other things that we, we are doing. Um, right. We are looking at the Mount Pleasant, Mamaroneck, Halstead intersection. Um, that the county, that's a county intersection because that section of Mount Pleasant is a uh, county owned roadway. Uh, so we've been working with them to try and develop an alternative to enhance pedestrian safety because of uh, uh, certainly the, you can't, the um, uh, one of the issues is that there's always trap potential for traffic going at Mount Pleasant, which is why there's no crosswalk there. Uh, we, as part of the uh, repaving project that the county did, they uh, installed a new crosswalk at Grand Street for us, and they relocated the crosswalk at, at Waverly from the north side to the south side intersection. Because what we, yeah, what we did is a couple of years ago, we did a traffic study, and that we found 80% of the cars were making the left-hand turn right into the cross. What? That was my idea. I, I, not, well, it was, but it, you know, the numbers are there. It's like 80% of the cars are making the turn in the, in the crosswalk. It seems like you could do it better. So the county did that. And, yeah, so. Oh, absolutely. That's a huge it seems like it's the residents and the students at MAS who sometimes get overlooked in this community are continuing to be overlooked when it comes to traffic. Well, I, I, I no, I, I can assure you that you know um, with with the I just mentioned the community development block grants. Uh, the last time the program was opened. Um, we were capped at applying, you know, submitting four applications. All four were for improvements around the Maranek Avenue School. Uh, so I, I, I can assure you, it's not from a staff perspective. It's it's not. Uh, it is a priority. It, it is a priority for us. I really and, and appreciate that. And yeah. I hope it is. And I just, I mean, yeah. as parents. You know, my oldest, you have the same issues. She's now in high school, yeah. and my youngest is in second grade. And maybe by the time he's in high school, and that's too long. Things can take a while, and good plans take a while to develop. This is. I can assure you, 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 you are welcome at the work session uh, uh, in two weeks. Uh, and, uh, and items, whatever, whatever um, uh, Dan comes up with, uh, would. Um, Take at least two weeks before it got to a, uh, a um, uh, regular session to be acted on, and you would have plenty of time to comment and weigh in. So, uh, and I want to assure you that uh, I live right there, so so you so I so I understand what, you, what you're talking about, and, and I share your. And, and I agree, I live there as yeah. well. I, I like some of the items that we we're talking about, like in the Heights and the I-95. Those came about because parents from those areas were concerned about the kids walking from those locations to the American Avenue School. That, that's how we first became aware of that and concerned because it was kids walking to that school from those locations. So we, we have been trying to deal with those as best we can. So it, I say, I'm, I'm more than happy to meet with uh, people. I, I don't know if you want to. Uh, maybe work with Tina. I can maybe arrange a meeting. I, I can talk about some of the uh, improvements that we're looking to do around Maranek Avenue School. I can uh, talk about, um, show you some of the designs that we're looking at for the Mount Pleasant intersection. Um, we are also looking at the old White Plains Road uh, intersection uh, with um, uh, uh, in uh, in Washingtonville. So there are a lot of things that we are looking at. We are dedicating resources to. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sorry, and one of our members of our committee, his child goes to the American Avenue School. 
So he's very familiar and very concerned about that. So you can be assured that that's something that, that, that we we take seriously. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite vocal about it. Um, there he is. That's, that's Ryan. That's Ryan. That's Ryan. That's Ryan. That's Ryan. So uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I go, I go in, in and out of there, you know, driving, walking, and you know, it is, it is an issue, and that's why. And the I ninety five uh, off ramp exit, you know, I think that we need to continue to look at that. Um, you know, there's a lot of good ideas, and 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 what Dan's been able to do, I think, uh, is come up with good ideas. And but I, what I like to see Dan, is some of those ideas that you think could work, um, so we can kind of start. Uh, rallying around the vision of what's possible um, and, and say, talking about those same things as 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 residents, as board members, of, as trustees, and really start thinking about what is is possible. Um, but we we oftentimes don't know what's possible because we don't know. I mean, I didn't know what a bump out was uh, six months ago, right? Um, so I think these are the things that we need to learn about. And uh, we do need to accelerate them. I don't think that we should be waiting around for years. It's been an issue. Um, if, if I recall from prior meetings, you know, we've had we've had fatal accidents of pedestrians in that in that area. Um, and, and I think that should really guide uh, the the sense of urgency that we have, not just as residents, but as parents. And you know, the the clock the clock's ticking. And um, you know, we need to make improvements. And we need to know what's possible from a budgetary standpoint with these block grants. Then, really, what's uh, feasible in a in a in a, uh, in a time frame that's going to make an impact in the in the short and medium term, and not when our kids are going off to college. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. You have to leave. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not the chair of the commission. So yeah, I, 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 I I'm, I'm signaling that it's time to go. Yes, I, 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 I am humble <laughs> servant. I, I do not make overtime. I'm hoping my body language is so cute. You're not getting paid overtime, Robert. Do we have any representation for the other issues from folks on the line? So we've covered a ton. Oh, we've had. Can I show the attendees, please? Uh, it's just uh, Catherine B, who uh, I wasn't able, uh, unable to promote the panelist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was, un I was, un it said that she was running an older version of Zoom and I couldn't promote her. So. And then I'm fine. We can put this up, for, but I'm fine for moving these to the next meeting. Just in the interest of time, energy, all of that. And so, so I have an action item. You want, so you guys have received the list that MAS has prioritized as a pedestrian and traffic issue. It was sent in May or June and sent. Is that the same the thing as you attended? You want me to resend that? Is that and the meeting I Brian attended? No, it was different. I have the I have it. I could redistribute the um okay. the sheet. So that means you and what how how else can we help you move this along? I think your involvement in the working session would be helpful. Um, I think if you have ideas, board. So um, uh, the, 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 this, okay. this commission advises the board. Okay. So I mean, if, uh, so you know, we accept their guidance, but uh, you know, we accept yours too. Right. Thank you. Okay, so the traffic commission created this. A group email called Traffic Commission, which we we created for the purpose of communicating amongst ourselves. And the problem that's created is that when people send us communication using that group email, it doesn't get to the clerks in the village that hear about these issues and put those on the agenda. So that's why over the last couple of months and specifically this meeting, there was um, unfortunately issues that were raised that are now on our county that weren't there because that information was not being picked up by Sally and Danielle and whoever. So we need to 
decide if we're going to use this traffic commission email. Uh, excuse me. It can be used up. Excuse me. Look, I'll finish. Sally has recommended that we not use that because for whatever purpose, um, whether we want to abide by that and not use it going forward, you know, you can decide. That's for you to decide. Uh, I'm gonna can, I, can I finish, please? No, you can can't. I, finish I can statement? advise you that you cannot use it because it means that you're deliberating uh, outside, uh, outside of uh, uh, outside of public view, and um, and the liaison, which would be me, is not copied on it. That's why you can't use it. We thought I'm the one who created it. I asked. So, that, so that's fine. It, we we don't idea. have. So let me finish my statement, please. Sure. The problem with using that was that issues that we want to put on the agenda that people are raising were not getting to the clerks in the village that see these and put them on the agenda. And, and that's what's happened. So I'm very happy. We don't use it. Th that's fine. But I wanted to point out that's why our agendas were not complete because we were using that email. And as Lou said, we probably should not be using it. And I'm fine. That's fine. Sure. But I just want to be sure that as we're going forward and people are communicating with us, that those new issues are seen by the village people that are responsible for putting them on our agenda so that our agendas are accurate and current. That was my point. That's it. I just want to say quickly, I'm not sure how many times there was confusion between the Board of Traffic and the Traffic Commission, but it was my idea, and I think I checked with Dan, for us to talk with each other in between meetings, there's so much going on in terms of protocol and all new. So I mentioned, to Brian to create a little, uh, and you were saying that we can do that as long as we just take minutes. Uh, uh, it's no, no. it's, it's, can't, it's can't. difficult for us it, to come at right. if, if I left that, this is this is new to me. I left that impression. I, I was I was what, mistaken. I no, 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 you the, you are subject to the open meetings law. You cannot deliberate. Uh, you cannot include uh, one person could email another person, but you can't email the entire group. Because that would consider that would be uh, an un it would be an assembly of the board yeah. even in a virtual environment. We're intending to do it, it's yeah. just a technical violation. Yeah. It's, just, it's just stepping on a landmine. Yeah, I think we're going to just talk among themselves as far as protocol, keep it kind of outside of making. Decisions. So that was if, 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 if the I think it was the wrong. Yeah, yeah, you you, you cannot was, discuss public business right. um, in, uh, in in that in that setting. So, I mean, if you wanted, you know, I, even, you know, kind of the, the format of the meeting, you know, how, how you hold your meeting is out to, uh, a matter of public business. Uh, but if it's, if it's a, you know, a thing like, you know, can we meet on this date? That's less of a, of a matter. You're trying to schedule something or, but, you know, having significant discussions about items on your agenda or the operation of the, Commission, uh, I, I think would would you know, fall afoul of uh, open meetings law. Just avoid it. That, that, I mean, is, even if you don't intend, to, you don't want to do it, step on a, a yeah. yeah, it's fine by me. I, yeah, I mean, so if, you maybe, maybe I understand. Yeah. As, as a general, as a general, I, I like yeah, to say, no, if, if, you, have, if you have any question, there is no question. So if you wanted to schedule an extra meeting, say we had uh, open business in between, you would have to schedule that meeting. With the clerk's office and have that on record and take take minutes. Absolutely, yes. yeah. Even to get the Zoom, you have to do that because yeah. the, one of the previous meetings I didn't ask for the Zoom meeting in advance, and this one I made sure to because I figured people. I was just going to do it as the the, the default. The, each but time. if we all agreed on a on an additional meeting, say a, a quarterly, to you know clean house and to go over. You know any old business that we Even really need weeks, to deliberate yeah. about, we can do that and schedule that with Sally and the liaison and try. Yeah, to find I, I think the requirement is you, I, I, the important thing. The important thing to to know is that the group email board of traffic goes to all of us, goes to Lou, goes to Sally and the other people in the village. So, so that's. That's why we want to continue to use that and, and not the right track because we're omitting people from the living. The last thing Sally or I want is what? 
He didn't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, then then it, there's something's wrong. So when I emailed, I don't know if it was because I have my village email that I was doing from, but both came up and I didn't know which to send it to. Yeah, so I got confusion. It creates quality confusion. confusion. That's because uh, the name of it. Well, 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 I, well, I think that that's a that's an issue with. I think that's an outlook in that's a setting in outlook. Yeah, I, I don't think we have I work for Microsoft in my spare yeah. time, and it's part of the what's called a global address list, so it'll auto complete. You know, we're, 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 regardless of whether we have that address, that should that that that, that uh, should be dead now. That list, right? Well, the, I think the list is dead, but you know, because it's been something that's been typed in your on your local version oh, of outlook. So you know, yeah, people have you know email addresses that haven't existed. And, uh, you know, I can't do anything about that. Right? Up to not, I mean, we are going to go through the lists and and and, and, and curate them. Yeah, I, like I said, if something auto populates on your own personal computer, I I can't do anything about that. I I, I can do a lot of things, but that is not one of them. We've, we've had some unpleasant surprises. Is there any way that we can move anything that's in that group into the regular email so we would be able to go back and forth? And well, it. It's a distribution list. So whatever gets sent so to that. emails that are in that group right now, yeah. can you populate it into where it needs to be? No, forward it. You can't, but I don't think there's anything. Well, I, I'm, I'm confused because it, it basically it, it already, it wasn't used it, it, it's, it's a, I don't say it's a dummy address, but it, it's an address that is programmed to, to forward it to you all. Okay. So it it doesn't it, your your email address isn't you know you know xyz at bomni dot or or bomni dot net. It's you know <laughs> this program to go to the right address. I have a global view, and I'm reading everybody's body language, as as uh, somebody said earlier. Um, I think we're near nearing the end of this. Yeah, we've devolved. <laughs> we devolved into arguing about distribution. <laughs> I, I thought we were done. No, 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 it's all good. Yeah. No, it's a good point because they, yeah, you have the. Well, that, that, there was there was a frantic, yeah. uh, serious morning of calls about that. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was not. Uh, it was, Oh, it came up. Wow. Yeah, oh, it came yeah, up. That was, that was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, well, doesn't oh, he have to yeah. close the meeting? Yeah, yeah I just wanted to thank meeting. Dan for coming, for helping us get it. It came up under, with a liaison. The what did you do with? <laughs> I want to thank Dan for helping <laughs> us get to the... Um, Can I make a motion to adjourn? I want yes, to thank Dan second. for going through, helping us go through the second 21 day. outstanding yeah. items very quickly. And thank okay. you for everybody for coming tonight to support yeah, us. Thank you. Everyone. Okay, <laughs> Ryan, go ahead. Thank you, guys. Can we go to dinner now? What time is it? Oh, really? Oh, my God. <laughs> was there an official vote to close the meeting? I heard a first. I, I heard a motion. Was there a second and a vote? Oh, I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All in favor? All, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Look at that. Everyone, that's my husband, James, and that's my neighbor, Tim. Threw me up.